Hey Simpsons Index fans, before we get into the episode, we just want to tell you about our new project, Pulp Fury Radio, available now wherever you get your podcasts. Yes, Pulp Fury Radio, it's our new anthology podcast series where we take the aesthetics of old radio and pair them with modern stories across a range of genres like sci-fi, horror, fantasy, mystery, and noir. Alright, now let's do the Simpsons Index. Woo! The Simpsons Index, an online spreadsheet that is also a podcast. This is the podcast. Coming to you out of SideQuest Studios, this is The Simpsons Index, episode 186. Hello out there, I'm your host Elliot J. O'Neill, and returning is David Malloy. Hello. And here as always, except when he's not, is BT Calloway. Ahoy, hoy. And thank you for... God, that was... Oh. <laughs> it makes me think like, like, you, like I edited a pause in there. That's no, <laughs> Just breaking rhythm for no reason whatsoever. Man. Oh, it yeah. hurts. Yeah, let, let the gag sit. <laughs> And now we'll move on. Now it's history. <laughs> it's like when they go, excellent, you know, <laughs> when Shatner auditions. <laughs> anyway, welcome to The Simpsons Index, the podcast where we watch and review three episodes of The Simpsons at a time, but there is a twist. Each episode must come from a dic- different, de- different, Whoa. Yeah. different decade. I got there. <laughs> they, you would benefit yourself from slowing down and Shatnerizing a little bit. Welcome <laughs> to The Simpsons Index. <laughs> The podcast where we view not one, not, <laughs> not, not two, but in fact three episodes of The Simpsons at a time. <laughs> but there's a twist. Each episode must come from <laughs> Jesus. a different decade. That, is this is this part of the bit of reviewing the episode? I don't just like, I'm just riding the lightning. Each man. joke is a horse that must be flogged beyond recognition. <laughs> so, but it's also a Trojan horse full of further horses. <laughs> Uh, we just watched an episode from the HD era, and as I pointed out before we watched it, it, it is itself a decade old. Mm. That's season, insane. Season 22, episode 7, How Munched Is That Birdie in the Window? First released Oof. in November of 2010, just got a big woof there from... Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> pun alert. <laughs> that ranked a woof for you. That's uh, oh, that's a mouthful and a stretch. It's also... A, with Santa's little help, I could have said the same. Mm. Um, like, it's both a pun and a spoiler. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rough. Yeah. If you'd never seen this episode, you go into it. And, oh no, that bird's gonna die. Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert: that birdie dies. <laughs> First released in November of 2010, it was directed by Michael Polcino, written by Kevin Curran. In this episode, a bird dies. Yes, <laughs> as we all do one day. Well, to be more elaborate, a pigeon with a broken wing flies into the Simpsons' home, Bart nurses it back to health and starts using it as a carrier pigeon, and then Santa's little helper eats it and puts a real strain on their relationship. Guys, what did you think? We know what's crazy for one is I've kind of lived this situation. What? Get fucked. No, it wasn't. It, <laughs> I'm going to use a gross phrase here. It wasn't <laughs> to completion. Um, so, <laughs> so, uh, of all we, phrasings <laughs> of that term. <laughs> we had a golden retriever called Coda who was the gentlest, sweetest dog that you could possibly imagine. Just mm. like absolutely lovely, lovely animal. And we had a bunch of chickens. Uh, and the chickens used to come up and try and peck at his food, and he would grumble at them. Mm. And if they really stuck it out, he would bark at them. They'd go away. Yeah. We have like photos of the chickens roosting on him while he was sleeping in the backyard. <laughs> uh, and also, our budgie Charlie would occasionally land on his head and freak him the fuck out because he's just like, "What's happening? There's a thing on me." <laughs> um, but he was like totally, completely gentle with other animals. Yeah. And he passed away. And after that happened, we got a new dog called Banjo, a white golden retriever who notoriously have terrible, terrible temperament, which oh, really? we didn't know till after we got it. <laughs> oh. And Charlie was let out and flying around the house and went, ah, oh, it's my friend Coda. And Banjo went, ah, oh, it's dinner. Yoink. And oh. grabbed him straight out of the air. <laughs> oh. And so this poor little guy, like we got him, we got him out and he was okay, but like mm. it broke his wing. Mm. And so the poor little guy was literally sitting on his perch in his cage with a cast half the size of him on his wing, I have never seen a bird look angrier in my life. Like, this this little guy looked furious all the time. It was amazing. Wow. Oh, that's what... Like, because, you know, considering the episodes I was going to bring today, you know, I know you are a fan of doggos. You have doggos. So mm-hmm. I've got a couple of doggo episodes lined up today. And I don't trust them with birds either. Fair. <laughs> Your little sausage boys? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't trust them with birds. Uh, one of them apparently has a history. We'll leave it at that. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a history of bird-related violence? Yes, a bit rough. Yep. Rescue Dashens. Well, they're hunting dogs. Yeah, like, fair, it, fair, it's fair. kind of Are their they? purpose. Yeah, dash, they're literally badger hunters. 
<laughs> I'm not fucking kidding. Low to the ground, it makes sense. Low to the ground, long, and so they can get into the burrows and you can grab their tails and pull them out. That's like, yeah, that's yeah. what they were bred for, which is why they make no sense. And why they're stocky yeah. little fucks as well, why their chests are so, like, dumb yeah, they're solid. That's they're the... solid beans, yeah. <laughs> Badger hunter dogs, my ass. They're probably Millhouse but no, hunter dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Go get Millhouse. <laughs> my brain is just Simpsons, nothing else. <laughs> uh, oh, that's an amazing coincidence. Mm. So, how did this episode resonate with you then? It didn't. <laughs> like, <laughs> that moment was kind of just like, oh, that's crazy. Mm. But I, I actually feel like they could have had more fun with it, not just killing the bird yep. as well, because it's not that that was like a terribly bad thing or anything. Like, it didn't sort of like throw me out of the episode completely. It's just I don't feel like they nailed the emotional arc with it in Mm, any sort of satisfying way. But in large part as well, I I feel like what this episode really nailed for me of the difference between the older Simpsons and the newer Simpsons is who is having fun. And to sort of go back to what we were talking about before we started recording, Mm -hmm. I've just started watching 30 Rock Mm. as well. And, you know, like some of the like people from that sort of era of comedy are like are or were working on The Simpsons. And I feel like what was happening in the older Simpsons was that the writers were having fun. Like they were the ones who were really sort of like getting to, you know, thrill in their craft now it's the animators. Mm. So the things that sort of stuck out to me, the moments that worked for me, were mostly the little moments of slapstick because they were still fun. They still worked. Whereas the writers are the ones that are kind of like, you know, just not coming with their A game. Yeah. That, no, that's a good point. Like, you know, we often criticize the new episodes for being, you know, flimsy excuses for side or cutaway gags. But yeah, objectively, a lot of those like look good. It's just, yeah, they don't feel good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess as well, like, you would think that if the animators are the ones that are having the most fun and that they're kind of, like, leading the charge on these new series, then, oh, Itchy and Scratchy would be perfect. Itchy and Scratchy was kind of miserable. Yeah. Fucking, I didn't know what they were going for. Yeah. (laughs) Like, it was just, yeah, killing Pluto and then this random assortment of old timey caricatures like Al Capone and Mr. Magoo and Mm -hmm. I think Bing Crosby was one of them. (laughs) Yeah. And I mean, that goes back as well to the chalkboard gag this time, which was a reference to like the old Peanuts cartoons. Mm -hmm. And it's like, is that a reference for your current audience? Like, I mean, people who were raised on the original seasons of The Simpsons are not watching the show anymore. Like, you have a new audience and this is the the references that you're catering? No, that's it. And any time they do a modern reference, you know, it feels hollow and they don't know why it's popular. And then, yeah, they fall back on all the old references that were making back in the old days, which were even dated then. I mean, yeah. the amount of Citizen Kane references mm. they did. But, you know, albeit amazing <laughs> film. I only watched it earlier this year. Well, yeah. I at least feel like with the Citizen Kane references, it wasn't necessarily as well for the recognition of Citizen Kane. Mm. It was because they were playing with kind of mm. the, the, the the images, or... right? Yeah, yeah. And like the beautiful, like that movie sort of like famous for its camera work. And so they had these uh, beautiful opportunities to frame their silly animated characters yeah. in this kind of like beautiful cinematic way that adds another level of... No, that's it. it. You didn't need to know the reference, but Mm. yeah. Because I didn't. I didn't for the longest time. I only saw Citizen Kane a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah, you wow. too. Yeah, I, I, it's the Citizen Kane of movies. <laughs> <laughs> like you saw it, like when you were a teen, right? Uh, yeah, I didn't remember it totally well, but yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, and what about you? What do you think of this episode? Man, this one's a mixed bag because I really like some of the jokes, and even mm. some of the ones that won't be fun in the retelling landed really well, <laughs> just from the strength of conviction of how they told them. But the plot is just air. Like, mm, yeah. it, I literally wrote down a halfway point again. Okay, but what are we doing? And then a little bit later, it's like, okay, but what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> and then by the time they figure that out, it's just over. And it doesn't even, it's got no weight and I already know how to fix it. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I think but first healing the bird and then training it up for its skill, I thought was very good progression for uh, oh, yeah. building the attachment for the bird. It could be a powerful misdirect, but we didn't misdirect into anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, there's an opportunity for real sort of pathos there because mm-hmm. you've got like trains the bird, he loves the bird, the bird is killed by his other pet. Like, yeah, that's hugely conflicting. And there's this sort of threat that they're going to actually say goodbye to Santa's little helper in this in yeah, this, it, And it episode. seems kind of tangible for a moment. Yeah, but, but even that didn't really have any weight. Mm. Like, there was a moment where I was like, oh, wow, they're really going to let this dog go. And then I was like, 
and I don't care. <laughs> well, and I should. The family yeah. didn't care. All of a yeah. sudden, it was Bart's dog, and he's the only one that cares about it. Like, really, I don't know why Lisa and Marge didn't have an emotional reaction. I get why Homer didn't because it's mm. Homer. It's kind of like when have the women in this show in the last ten years had agency? Well, yeah, mm. and I'll just sort of jump to what stood out to me for better or worse, which is they started doing a Lisa B plot, which was her admitting she had a fear of oh, pigeons. Yeah. Jeez, I yeah. And then about it just that. gets dropped. Like <laughs> you can explore so much on that, especially as someone who loves animals so much and defends them. Is yeah, has one that is like, I just don't like it. The culmination of that story was her flipping through all the cards of her memberships, the fucking and the, Clamnesty International, yeah, blah, blah, blah. and it's like, yeah, we know you're just recycling off the best things you can think of, and then she just goes, well, those are all the best ones. Like, ah, oh, fuck. No, yeah. they aren't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like I, that writer session was a day. <laughs> <laughs> that was one guy talking to himself. Yeah, um, and it wasn't like they were hard for time it had the long introduction and then a full introduction and then the long couch gag so. mm. Mm. Yeah, well i fun. think you framed that actually for me because mm. halfway through the couch gag you said huh short episode yep. and it like oh my god did it feel like in so many other places like there were so many points where a joke would land i think we've talked in the past about giving breath to these jokes and everything mm. but a joke would land and that breath was like hey yeah, there were so yeah, many right. jokes where they had the extra beat or an extra button mm-hmm. or just like, ah, uh, yeah, you didn't need to go that direction yeah. with it. Yeah. <laughs> the ad, like, I know that they're hardly a convention in the last 10 years that's that important, mm-hmm. but the last gags before the ads yeah. were just the most woeful <laughs> things oh. in the episode. Incredibly Holy shit. Incredibly bad. Yeah. Nelson, why are you sad? My mom ran away with a party clown. Like, Sorry, what? <laughs> Cut to black. No extra information. I, even yeah. Bart seeming a little bit bummed out by it. <laughs> and then yeah. just cut to black. What? <laughs> then Mo, there's no such thing as a bird dinner on. I was just going to scam you out of your house. Cut. <laughs> Done. <laughs> That's a gag. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, sorry, just going back to the Marge Lisa thing. And yeah, the culmination of that was that stupid card joke. And also Marge going, I'm scared of opossums. And then Mm. we have this fucking extended bit, which it's so unsatisfying. It feels like there is a good version of that joke somewhere, but not here. (laughs) I felt like there was a fair amount of show and tell in this one. And we'll get to it. But uh, BT, what stands out to you for better or worse? I'm going to throw to a moment that I feel is a good metaphor for this entire episode where they have the carrier pigeon and they're using it to send t- messages around, basically text messages, which is kind of funny. There's a bit where they send one to Mr. Burns to say, get naked and do a ballet. And he's yeah. like, well, that's bad grammar, but okay. And it's like, okay, first of all, why is Mr. Burns just doing that? But then I kind of like the visual was pretty funny, but then it was also, but why is this happening? So I was having a laugh at the same time, just going, but why? Yeah. And then uh, they cut to Homer and Lenny and Carl who are yeah. watching this and laughing. At that point, I'm kind of confused where the writer's heads are at because I'm yeah. like, did Homer send the pigeon? Like, what That's was the... the implication, yeah. Okay, all right. And then, so then they're enjoying that for a bit. Smithers closes the curtains on them. We get a few more silhouettes of him doing ridiculous lifts, which yeah. is kind of enjoyable. And then Lenny says, you guys go, I'll hang for a bit. And sits there yeah. and Homer watches and for a good... Homer and Carl leaves. Yeah. And then Lenny just sits and watches like, but... For a good five seconds or so. Yeah, and it's also like, but you guys did this to watch it. Why is it then a weird button f- that Lenny wants to continue watching? It's like, is he now enjoying the craft of it? You could do that joke in a different way. Just, I don't know. It's, yeah. It's and odd. it's like, really the only interpretation that I can come out of that gag with mm-hmm. as well, because he sits there and is like, you guys go, I'll watch for a bit. You know, I- I'd like to believe maybe he's just appreciating the dance and that's <laughs> the gag. The but it's like, art. this feels like it's supposed to be a gay joke. Kind of, that's, what, that's why I was very confused because his expression yeah. wasn't like, mm. it was and just, it's just like, what are you, what's the gag? It could here? have been the line of, I hope this doesn't awaken anything in me. Or, uh, yeah, you know, but, that, that kind of but, even but even that then, at least, it'd like, be weak and odd. It, it would be weak and odd, but at least that would be something. Yeah. Like, that would be like, I could go, oh, it's a gay joke. This is yeah. bad writing. Um, <laughs> yeah. Rather than just go, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> what is, what? Well, for me, like, yeah, as funny as it was seeing the silhouettes and the ridiculous lifts, I think, yeah, that's where the joke started to fall apart was when Smithers got involved. I do wish it was one of those things where uh, Lenny, Carl, and Homer were like, okay, I thought we wanted this, but this is yeah. this is hard to look at. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, I, yeah. I, I they've think... been like, I thought we wanted to watch this, but he's just so graceful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought this would be humiliating for our boss, but fuck, he can move. <laughs> I guess being a weightless person just lends yourself to yeah. the movement made of, of ballet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It doesn't hurt when he has to balance on his toes because yeah. he only weighs as much you as his clothes and keys. You have to an old crispy leaf dance on the wind. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like... 
It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Um, I think it speaks to a lack of confidence in the jokes, right? Oh, that definitely. they can't just drop the punchline and move on. They yeah. feel this need to sit in it and go like, get it? And it's like, do you? <laughs> yeah. No, like I said, so much show and tell. A tell and show. All mm. of it. Dave, what stands out to you for better or worse? There was there was one joke that stood out for me just for its abject cruelty. And I, I don't know if I'm like for it or against it, where in that extended B plot thing with Lisa, they were talking about various, you know, it's okay for people who love animals to have a fear of animals, like Indiana mm. Jones feared snakes. The yeah. grizzly man had grizzlies. It's like, that's rough, dude. That is a rough joke. The grizzly man? The grizzly man, yeah, the guy who was like famously killed by grizzly bears on audio. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that documentary, dude. The one that, like, so there's the movie Grizzly Man is a Werner Herzog documentary about this guy who, like, has a huge attachment to grizzly bears and then dies in the course of his work. And basically, his wife has like the last audio recording of when he was attacked and killed by a bear. Oof. And they don't show this. Mm. On the in the film, because that what they instead have is they have a shot of Werner listening to it in headphones, mm. and, and he like, just while goes while the audio is playing as well. While in the audio, movie? while the audio is playing for him, mm. not for you, the audience member, so yeah. you don't hear this, and you just see Werner's face, and you just hear him go, "Never listen to this." <laughs> like that's Grizzly Man. <laughs> it's just wow. like this is a throwaway gag about this like actual man Sorry. who died. All I can see now is the YouTube thumbnail. Werner Herzog reacts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of. <laughs> <laughs> the he... first React video. <laughs> of course Werner Herzog was proto-YouTube. <laughs> of course he was. <laughs> yeah, him in the headphones just like, <laughs> <laughs> What up, YouTube? Yes. <laughs> Smash that like that button. That sounded less like Werner Herzog and more like Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I, I can't do a Werner Herzog. I always slip into Christoph Waltz. Yeah. <laughs> you do a great Donkey, though. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, YouTube? I'm playing Breath of the Wild. <laughs> yeah. I'm Donkey, and I have dumb opinions about game journalists. <laughs> Sorry. <Ooh. I'm... laughs> uh, Dave, did I ask you what stood out to you for better or worse? I don't think I did yet. Um, I think, well, you, you did, and I, I think that was the one that stuck out. There was another one that was sort of like... One of the things that stuck out as well was that just the formula of their jokes, just noticing how formulaic it had become. Like, mm-hmm. here's the setup, and here's... Typically Homer as well. It's like Marge saying, Homer, don't do this thing. And Homer going, I won't. Yes, I will. Mm. Like that's kind of the classic sort of setup for a lot of the jokes. But mm-hmm. I think the one that the one that got us all laughing was definitely the there was another sort of like sexist sort of gag thing where Homer was fantasizing mm-hmm. about a celebrity I'm unfamiliar with. Yep. Guest star of this episode, Danica Patrick. I'm assuming you Thank guys you. aren't into stock cars. No. Oh, that's <laughs> where you're right, Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a stock car joke because they always turn left? I have literally no idea. <laughs> Danica Patrick, for everyone uh, at home who doesn't know, is a NASCAR driver. NASCAR is basically the ones where it's a circular track, and yeah, it's just stock cars going around that for an entire day. Yeah, good good for her. Well yeah. done. Yeah. But yeah, there's just like this sort of gag where she is contractually obliged to appear in fans' fantasies about her. Um, and then he says he'll keep it from Marge. Marge pops into the fantasy, and the two of them start fighting and clawing at Marge's clothing and sort of ripping it off in pieces. And it's like, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then Homer says, but I should have let that fantasy continue a little longer. It cuts back into the fantasy <laughs> and the half-clothed Marge and Danica yeah. are just like beating the absolute shit out of Homer <laughs> just for a few seconds. Just CBT at top points. <laughs> <Yeah>. Absolute <laughs> for CBT. For a few seconds, after which he says, what they don't suspect is that I'm into this. Which <laughs> <laughs> is quite it's, good. It's rare that I like the button more than the gag. But yeah. yeah, I really like <laughs> it. Well, well, like, no one got me. <laughs> well, no, like you mentioned before with the Homer whisper joke, the contradiction thing, like that's often a point of annoyance for me, but I liked that one. Homer, yeah. are you scaring the children? No. Yes, yes I, I am. am. <laughs> I actually really loved his story. Uh, the, about the... The, uh, the bloody hangman. The bloody hangman. Bloody Kasha, hangman. Kashu, my lies have come true. <laughs> I didn't like the out on it, but oh, I did I like, like the whole... Uh, like so He stalked the streets of London. You said it was in Boston. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a, a complete conviction on the joke's behalf. Yeah, they were, really sold it. There were definitely bits of it that worked, but there was mm. also like a lot of like... Because of the... 
voice that he'd picked. Like there was so little clarity in what he was saying. Yeah. It's like I couldn't pick out what was gag and what was him just going, oh, this man hanged people and it was really gruesome and gross. And I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> no, I think Homer's the biggest mixed bag about this episode sure. because, yeah, there's so many like tenants of bad Simpsons jokes like – Homer's mood swings joke, which we get when he's going through the Rorschach test. And again, yeah. how short was this episode? God, yeah. there's so many of Let's them. get, Dan, that was great. Can we do another seven or eight yeah. of those? Another mm-hmm. seven or eight options. Thanks, Dan. Why not go with a classic gag if he flips through all the Rorschach tests and goes, why are all these of my parents? Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Ten paintings, all mum and dad fucking. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like your 120th episode gag there would be cutting to Dan in the studio and going, really, this is all we've got? How much am I getting paid for this? Oh, a lot. Oh, oh, okay, <laughs> let's go again. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. He hasn't had a pay increase since season 23, but he doesn't fucking need one. Yeah, no. <laughs> Neither's no. the Sultan of Brunei and he's doing all right. He just needs to read the script and do the old Flintstones gag of, what? it's a living. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Play count. Is this the first time watch for either of you? Yes, yes. it is. Both of you, it seems. Simultaneously, no less. Mm -hmm. Uh, How efficient. (laughs) Yeah, I've actually seen this episode a bunch. And, you know, I've said it every time we cover a season 22 episode. This is my favorite season of the HD era. But unfortunately, going back and comparing to old Simpsons, I'm finding that... Yeah, maybe season 22 wasn't as good as I originally thought when I started this podcast. (laughs) It certainly has some highlights and some of the better episodes, but yeah, there's so many cracks and even the ones that I do like. And like for the record, I kind of liked this one. I just Mm. see there's a lot of flaws going on. Yeah, Yeah. it wasn't like, you know, completely unsalvageable. Yeah. But I mean, it says a lot as well that literally like the moment I saw the animation quality and the frame rate, I became immediately depressed. Yeah. (laughs) It was just like, no, this... This, this won't be good. <laughs> no, that's it. That HD, The Simpsons, it's, yeah, mm. cynicism goes up. But was it a particularly wacky episode of The Simpsons? What are the, some of the cartoony moments that stood out to you guys? A uh, bit I really liked was when Homer builds, the, like, the, the coop for the pigeon. And Bart's like, I don't know, it's a bit unsteady. I'm like, ah, oh, he's going to knock it, it's going to fall down. But no, he gives it a tap, the thing uncoils, rolls up, gets back into the box, and the staples land into yeah. it and reseals <laughs> like... Okay, that's funny. <laughs> that's good. Again, that's the that feels like the animators having more fun than the writer because the writer's right. just like it falls over. Yeah, and the animators done like, something. No, like, we can do better. Than that. Yeah, <laughs> even the angels bowling. I didn't hate that. Gag. Again, I liked that. Like, yeah. So it starts Rod and Todd listening to the thunder and they're scared. And you know, Ned's all, oh, it's just angels bowling. And they go to angels bowling. It's like, okay, that's your gag, big deal. But then I like how everything is creating thunder. So yeah. you know. Dusting his hands is creating it, or swiping his card to pay for beer is creating it. Like, mm. okay, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, I still feel like him just saying that's the angels bowling would have been funnier than than the whole additional sequence, yeah. the whole Family Guy sequence of this reminds yeah. me of the time that blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the other thing is that this is framed as this is actually happening. Like mm-hmm. the hangman story is a story; they're cutting away to something. Yeah, this, there this was just pans a pan up, pan up to heaven. Yeah, <laughs> true. Well, we know that God canonically exists in the Simpsons. So. Yeah, and that's maybe. I, I should point out there as well, just because we made the Family Guy reference, that, that like that animation style about The Simpsons that now kind of gets me sad. So it never gets me sad when it's old Peter Griffin, because guys, it's coming back. <laughs> Damn it, not another David <laughs> saying it's coming back. Oh, <laughs> the omen. <laughs> It's really not, is. don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> or is it? <laughs> I also did quite like, uh, are you bored of black and white war footage? <laughs> like, I was immediately like, I don't care where this gag goes, I already like it. Is I, that a specific <laughs> Peter Jackson stab as well? Because that's good. Like, I like that. All right, that. Oh, was that what he did was all those colorization things? Yeah, yeah, he oh, colorized yeah. it. Uh, I can't remember what the movie's called now. But yeah, he did a whole movie of like World War One colorized footage. Oh, okay. oh yeah. interesting. Uh, I just kind of took it as, you know, as a nation so obsessed with war that they're just tired of the old footage. Like, no, no, we need some blood. Yeah. (laughs) And specifically the way they say that getting it in color will get you back in the game. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's it's actually funny because I was watching um, previously advertised on this show, uh, Mm -hmm. Oversimplified the other day. They did a video on on, uh, Prohibition. Yeah. And they mentioned the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, which I'd never heard of. Mm. Oh, really? So, yeah, a quick squiz online to see about that. And then there was like... In amongst all the articles that I googled about it, they were like, 
look at the St. Valentine's Day in colour. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I'd rather not. There's an atrocity. There's Why are you seven making seven dead yeah. Irishmen. Why do I want to see this there's in colour? Like, there's one specific colour there that I know is there. Yeah. I don't yeah. need more vivid. So that's what I actually really liked about this gag, that it kind of highlighted the weird <laughs> fucking macabre nature of that. It's yeah. like, oh boy, I get to see the blood in its hey, intentional red. Do you see some Hiroshima footage in high definition? <laughs> oh, no. Fuck. Why <laughs> not? At 120 frames a second. IMAX 3D. <laughs> like, no, stop. I think one of the one of the good gags was Skinner was saying, Bart seems to be really sad lately, and then saying, we know we're going to try and fix it. And he's like, oh, no, I, if anything, can you make him sadder? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, Look how lazy his gags have gotten. It's just got a bag that says, insert poop light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or th- again, Skinner had, like, he had actually the beginnings of a good joke where mm. one of the carrier pigeon messages that was sent to him from Edna was like, every day since we've broken up has been the best day of my <laughs> life, which is incredible. Mm, and then yeah. they turn that into, like, she's a slut, kind of yeah, like, yeah. Oh, Oh, it sucks. Yeah, uh, P.S. I'm banging Chalmers. He's like, oh, no, she was just on the rebound from Willie. It's like, oh, fuck Yeah, it's and, that, and that's exactly what it, it sucks. Yeah, mm. it's so cheap. Especially because, you know, when back in the day, Bart suggests all the men that Kirobabal could be yeah. dating, <laughs> Willie was like, I don't want to let you know what that guy's into. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We know the history, damn it. Cartoony moments, and it kind of ties into the heart a little bit as well, but like... All of Santa's little helper post eating the birds like effort to be Bart's friend and yeah. just like I do like bringing him the squirrel, laying it down in front of him, and then when Bart leaves, he starts rolling in the yeah. dead body. Yeah, <laughs> you like, just don't get it. That's no, a dog. he does not. <laughs> we always notice the great, great things about something like a Pixar movie, right? Is when the like the animators notice those those yeah. motions that animals do and capture them so perfectly. Yeah, or even you know little tiny things that yeah. people do, but specifically animals. Just like I always think back to um Doug mm-hmm. in Up. Because, like, he reminds me so much of Coda because mm. of the little tiny things that mm. he would do that were just, like, adoring and sweet but thick as two short planks. <laughs> and it's just, like, yeah, it's real reminiscent and funny. And so that rubbing himself in the dead possum <laughs> is just kind of yep. gross and very dog-like. It's mm. like, yep. <laughs> Yeah, I felt like that was what was such a shame. We may as well transition into the heart of the episode. That was what was such a shame about the climax with the bird fight because it, it, that yeah. he was not acting like a dog there. And especially when you think back to the moment where he finally, you know, understands Bart's command in that old classic episode. Mm-hmm. He's not going to understand don't ever eat a bird just straight off the bat. And yeah. they haven't built up to that in any satisfactory no. way so this moment just lands so weirdly yeah yeah now what it should have been is you know the therapist all like okay but the dog's just acting like a dog it's just basing it it's just animal instinct and then bart should have been like but then he doesn't actually care about me it's only because we feed him and clo- and give him a house that he cares he doesn't actually give a shit i noticed and you then... backed off on the word clothe oh yeah they don't clothe him. yeah, yeah <laughs> I at, at the backpedal i mean you can clothe the dog and it's always funny <laughs> But it's not what they do here. Mm. Uh, yeah, dude, and then... I have dashings, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got one of those ones that looks like his little knight riding in the back. <laughs> so, those good. Are the door. <laughs> so good. Wasn't that in um, Labyrinth? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get him a little Labyrinth cosplay. God, I wish I could remember the name of his, like, because I, I remember the guy's exact voice, but I don't remember <laughs> the name of the steed, damn it. <laughs> so, to have that as, you know, your bit, the Bart's like, this dog doesn't actually love me, we just feed it. And then later on, when it comes to his defense, then it's, you know, oh, he actually does care or something like that. But instead, it's just, oh, I understand why you killed a bird now, because I killed a bird. It's like, you were doing it in self-defense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And th- yeah, that's sort of like what makes this moment feel even weirder, because we watch Bart choke that ostrich for a long time. Really long time. Someone was telling me the other day, we were talking about sort of like movie history, and they mentioned this movie called A Short Film About Killing, which is notorious for having a sequence where a man strangles another man, mm. and just for how long it goes for, because the filmmaker was trying to do this whole thing of like not sensationalizing the violence, mm. of just going, no, 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 this is what this involves. Yeah. Like, this is the reality of this situation. Yeah. And it's like, are they trying to do that in this Simpsons episode <laughs> where he's strangling a bird? Yeah. Of all the references that they're doing, <laughs> I, I fucking Christoph hope Christler, Christler. Mind like, you, they, yeah, they did that Werner Herzog reference before, so... That's God, true, maybe. that's true. Yeah, 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 someone with a real penchant for, like, <laughs> deep, dark European cinema was writing this episode. <laughs> it's just like, now remember, you can't just choke an ostrich until it passes out to murder it. You must strangle <laughs> it for a further five minutes. You have really very long necks. <laughs> you need a team effort. It's kind of like a tug of war to you choke an ostrich. you got to ride this son of a bitch to hell. Yeah. <laughs> like, just keep going. Yeah, um, any other heart moments are standing out to you guys 
there's something in the heart that's in the gags as well, like with the gag about Oxycontin candy. Mm. Yeah. Because like America has an enormous Oxycontin problem. And so it's like, I can see, again, there's merit in that joke and it being crusty brand Oxycontin candy. Yep. There's merit in that joke. But this episode is 10 years old. Surely that's not still a problem. <laughs> so <laughs> why does that joke fall so flat? Yeah, I don't, maybe because it's just like, ooh, too real. <laughs> maybe, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe just, just the timing thing again? Yeah. I don't know, because like it came after this very depressing o- ostrich sequence. Like yeah. That should have been wacky. Like, mm. a, a, Bart fighting an ostrich, like, or at least Homer helping rather than just cutting to him, like, just moving his arms and like, not even saying encouraging words. Yeah, I felt that was meant to be a proud moment of I've choked him for so long and now he's choking an ostrich. Yeah. It, it didn't land like that if that was the intent. Yeah. No, I, I just felt it was like a really uncomfortable scene. So like, yeah, a joke like that afterwards where it's like, Haha, kids traumatized. It's like, oh, well, here, have basically heroin. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that, that whole just idea of like watching that scene and like him strangling it kind of funny at first, but it's, like you said, it, mm. it looks exactly like the way Homer strangles it. It's like, Wait, is he really going to murder this bird? Like, this adult-sized bird, he's going to murder it? Mm-hmm. And we're led to believe for a while that, that yeah, he just killed that bird. Yeah. But, yeah, then he comes back to life at the end. And I wrote down, stupid ending. Stupid mm. ending. Real, real rough. And just uh, the, my other note of heart was the funeral scene. Mm-hmm. What the fuck is this tap spit? Oh, God knows. Taps is the funeral song from the military, but they're just saying the word taps instead of singing it. It's it's not good. That's good. Uh, <laughs> like, so that melody, da, 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 is called yeah. taps. Yes. And they're just saying taps over and over again. Yes. Uh, and it's the sort yeah. of thing where it's like, wait, I don't understand that reference. Let me quickly Google. Okay. It's still <laughs> like, like yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I think I got it and I was stone faced as everyone else in the room. So, But on the flip side of that, I liked the other song gag where they sing Grace Guys Gonna Clear Up and they're like, it's from Bye Bye Birdie. <laughs> yeah. But even that felt like there was something to that that just didn't work where I just, it didn't feel as funny as it could have been. It just sort of yeah. felt it bad for Bart. It could have been better written. Yeah. Yeah. You but, know when Homer's doing that Battlestar Galactica puzzle and he's just bashing the piece in? Yeah. It, that's that joke. He's just shoving it in as hard as possible. Mm. Sorry, David. I feel like there's a good BSG joke in that <laughs> as well. <laughs> Well, frack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, actually, no, it is a good BSG joke because they didn't know what to do with the ending. Yep, so they, they just kind of, hammered oh, it in. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> yep. There. there it fits. It's like, okay, I guess, technically. <laughs> but ultimately, did this feel like an episode of The Simpsons? So these characters we know and love. I mean, Bart growing an attachment to something, sure. It's just so plot-wise, there's so little here for me to really grab onto. It's like, there's no betrayal of character, but there's nothing that feels like mm. wholly faithful to it either yeah like i said homer's a bit of a mixed bag but it's more he's doing the jokes that often are just either yeah. overplayed or aren't working yeah it's like being he's playing ha- the hits it's like yeah. being handed like the fortune out of a fortune cookie going is this a good novel like there's not enough here <laughs> like how do i answer that <laughs> i was Joseph. even thinking of of bart being like you know do the bit do the bit i didn't do it Crickets. Cricket. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> did you not learn the lesson that your own show established? <laughs> There's something in it as well where, like, watching the opening credits, right? Because they've altered the animation at this point. They've changed mm. a bunch of... They've not only, like, you know, freshened up the lines and everything so that it looks like an HD era Simpsons. They've changed moments to sort of reflect on, you know, all of the decades of The Simpsons that mm. have come since then. And there's something that just doesn't land with me there. Yeah. I don't know what that was. If it was maybe just the the additional jokes that they were adding just didn't strike me as especially funny, or if there's something about them that just, it's that process of, like, palimpsest, like you're copying and copying and copying Mm. and copying and copying copying until there's so little of the original left. Yeah, I think it's, to me, it always feels very boastful. Like, look how long we've been running and how all this material we have to pull from. It's like, but just... Uh, make better shows and that'll yeah. be fine. Imagine if MASH did that. <laughs> this war is gone for 20 years. <laughs> MASH in Afghanistan. Um, oh, MASH Afghanistan. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that could be a 20 season show. <laughs> I hope it's still not a problem today. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, I mean, we we're talking about this actually with Greg last time is that because. Yeah, he pointed it out as well. It's just, it's gag after gag after gag. The old intro was the basic thing with two interchangeable jokes, the chalkboard mm-hmm. yes. and the couch. And this one is just, you got the Ralph joke, you got the billboard. The... You got the first thing that floats past the Simpsons logo. Yeah, yep. exactly. Mm-hmm. And they're just putting gags 
all over the place. Lisa even comes back into the door and does more on the yeah. saxophone solo. Yeah, and um, when Marge and Maggie are in the supermarket, they're buying things that were referenced in previous episodes, mm. like tobacco juice. And we all know that the last tobacco plant went down in that plane. Did it, Elliot? Did it? <laughs> <laughs> you mean that sheep galloped away with it and then made millions of dollars? Yes, that sheep had to poop, and that poop had the seeds of the tobacco. Actually, that, that is a good point. The plant might have lived. I know. Huh. That's the point I'm making dramatically. <laughs> also means we've drowned out IRA forever. One of the many far-right <laughs> messages. <that they> <laughs> uh, but yes, no, would you watch this one again? Eh. Laundry, maybe? Yeah, that's where I was putting it. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll stop and watch the gags I liked, but outside of that... Yeah. yeah. Can you clarify laundry uh, so, for uh, You would put it on while you're folding laundry. Or otherwise doing a, a house task where you'd sooner have a television rather than music or some podcast or something. Yeah, for like sure. Like this podcast. Are you enjoying your laundry or dishes out there? Well, that's a good fold. Nice work. Yeah, that was... <laughs> that was re- have you worked at Supre? That was nice. <laughs> yeah. That was crisp. But yeah, sharp shirt fold. Well done. <laughs> uh, BT, what would you like to change about this episode? I mean, I already talked about my rewrite for the ending. Um, just make it feel like it has more of a point so that misdirect means more. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. have a bit of Santa's little helper feeling neglect. Not even that, just it playing with a pigeon earlier or something. It just feels so left field. And that yeah. could work for like a hard, uh, unexpected turn. I especially like the idea of Mo being like, well, why don't you put it in this pigeon race? Like, okay, this is where it's going. And then hard cut, no, we're not. Yeah. Um, but it just didn't quite land. I'm not entirely sure why, but just structure this one better. I feel like I didn't have a sense of what was going on to then be surprised when then that wasn't the thing. Yeah, the only real lead-in we get from that is that, yeah, Santa's little helper is the top of the hierarchy. So maybe if there was, yeah, a little bit of that, like... For me, like, the left field thing kind of works, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. It could have been more build. Mm. How about you, Dave? What would you like to change? Just the overall confidence... It's like, imagine watching a stand-up set, right? And you see, like, you know, first-time stand-up comics who are uncertain and not really, you know, sure of the power of their jokes or whatever, and they throw things out with a little nerve, and you're like, there's merit to that. Like, yeah. that yeah. was, that that was a good if joke. You, if you'd stuck to it, And yeah. you just need to give me a bit more of that. And then, like, the more that they do, the better they become, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, yeah like, it just felt like that. Yeah, I hate it when you're watching a stand-up and the joke doesn't exactly land like they expect, and it's like... Oh, that didn't really go well. Anyway, another thing is like, no, you're doing yeah, a show. You take it don't, in stride. Yeah, don't make me think that you're not confident unless that's your bit. Yeah, because we know you aren't. You're a stand-up comedian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know you've got self-doubt issues. You wouldn't be up here by yourself if you didn't. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to think about what I'd change. Just, I could sit with the first two acts, but... Everything mm. after the pigeon death really needed to change for yeah, me. Yeah, disintegr- for sure. Whatever was there disintegrates. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't even mind the whole going upstate to a farm bit, especially as a bit of like, no, this is the first time we. it actually means the dog is going to a farm upstate. Yeah. Although I will say my favourite joke of the episode was in the third act of like, when the therapist is talking to the family, it's like, now nah, Marge, I know from our phone call that you have a poor service provider. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that got me really well. That's a good joke. <laughs> oh yeah, the other guest star of this episode, Rachel Vaughn. Ah. Oh shit! Rachel Vice, Rachel <laughs> Vice. <laughs> Don't be like Rachel Vice. Say good night. Thank you, BT. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen the sound of music, but you knew oh where it was God. from, motherfucker. Because I used to listen to Hollywood Babylon, <laughs> and Ralph Garman all the time would go anal vice, <laughs> anal vice. Okay. Also, <laughs> not to that melody. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well. Damn it, man! You've studied music. Carry a tune. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bass player. I didn't. I didn't study how to carry a tune. Is it weird that like I feel like Rachel Vice has had like an incredible and varied career, and I was oh, just yeah. like, oh, she was in the Mummy. <laughs> <laughs> no, she has, but that's where my heart is. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and musical moments. We had a little bit of weather report. Speaking uh, of right. playing bass, Jaco Pistorius uh, doing a little bit of a song called Birdland. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which you guys mentioned kind of sounded like Charles in Charge. Yeah, which is funny because like I only know that because of references in other shows like this. Yeah. I never saw like Charles in Charge. No, the first time I heard the Charles in Charge song was on that episode of Scrubs where Ted Zacapella band is doing TV themes now. <laughs> and yeah, like I'm actually not, despite being like into jazz, I'm actually not too familiar with Weather Report. Um, but yeah, a little bit of that. Some classic jazz. Get some shoulders moving. There's some some groove to that. Yeah. 
But yeah, I feel like it's one where they typed in bird into song finder and was like, yeah, that'll do. But yeah, it does sound like Charles in Charge, but yeah, it does predate it by about seven years. It's one of those things where like, I don't know if you guys have seen this sketch that went around on the um, Chaser War in 2020, Mm -hmm. the sketch about the contact tracies. Oh yeah, just watched that the other day. How how, like fantastic that is. Um, And uh, like every time we get these sort of like super, super dated references in more recent episodes of The Simpsons, I feel like them. (laughs) I just get that (laughs) R.I.P. Oh my god, these men. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, how can we make this up to you? Oh, you could do a TikTok with us. Oh, really? No. No. (laughs) God, no. (laughs) Very excellent sketch. Uh, Love Freudian nip. Fucking Jenna and Vic are so fucking funny. Yeah, and uh, Nenariyama and Beck Shaw, who wrote it, who are also just so good. Oh, no shit. They wrote it. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I thought it was a Freudian one. Oh, that's awesome. They performed it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Mm. wow. Performers, not writers this time. God, we have some fucking amazing Aussie talent. Hell yeah, we do. Guys, have you got any other notes? We'll start with you, David. Nah. Beach. Yeah, of course I do. You, you've met me. Um, I like the, how the bird vomits on uh, Lisa's arm. Yeah, just right when she's getting used to it. Oh, this is not so bad. Black yep. worms. Yep. Okay, it's a bit I didn't like, and then again, I liked the button where, um, you know, Bart blends up the worms for mm. the bird and then gives it some. Marge walks in, thinks it's a protein shake and has some. But I, that was dumb. But then she comes back and goes for more. I'm like, okay, that's, that was, I didn't expect that. Oh, they lost me on the goes back for more, but they had me on. Well, I thought the old would be, you know, you take the seven, she's like spits it out mm. or something, you know, uh, pff, this isn't protein shake. But no, I because I, I didn't see it coming, it got me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, when Santa's little helper eats the eulogy. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Just really rubbing it in. And especially, like, Homer's being unexpectedly profound. In the words of Emily Dickerson. Rah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> that is me, Don Elliot. Back to you. All right. Um, the ever-evolving and changing character of Raphael is a bird guy in this episode. Yeah, who doesn't... That was good. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't live in Springfield. Although I do is like his line of, Girly, wherever I go, 200 birds got to go with me and they all want to sit in front with Papa. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed that, even though, yeah, it doesn't make sense for all of his jobs. He never got followed around by pigeons, but Raphael is a 200-person yeah. club. Well, he did once upon a time work in that pet store when he sold Lisa the ah. store, so maybe he just took the pigeons and ran. <laughs> There's an interesting uh, through line to figure out the mm. timeline of The Simpsons by Raphael's. Oh, if you feel like going insane, yeah. <laughs> I mean, try like, figuring that out. Like, he's back and forth in it because his delivery is so mm. fantastic, right? Mm. I, I feel like the person who got the short end of the stick in terms of the lines that they had to deliver this time around was mm. Mo, though. Because yeah. he gets that one joke that's just sort of like, oh, Detroit, you know, they're living in Mad Maxi times. It's like, yeah, yeah that's a good one. Mm. That's a, that's a good one that Mo gets there. <laughs> it's a good little classic. Mo. Yeah, it's just sitting there in the studio, just. Uh. Yeah, and <laughs> the rest of the Bird Diderod rant was just so boring and bad. Yeah. yeah. Although a visual Mo joke that I liked when um, they take the bird to Mo's bar and it lays eggs and he just drops it in the pickled eggs. Mm-hmm. Pretty good bit. I, li- I like pickled egg jokes. <laughs> Bart's line, what about my long sad history with frogs makes you think I can take care of a bird? I like this. Bit of continuity here. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I don't know his long sad history with frogs. I know his long sad history he, with many other animals. He infected Australia with uh, mm-hmm. frogs. Oh, yes. Uh, Charles Wazers, thank you very much. Charles Wazers, yes. Please le- use the colloquialism. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a majority American listeners. I have to translate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or as we call it, uh, wordy swaps. <laughs> sure, we would call it that. <laughs> I'm your wordy swapsers. Go talk your language. Another bit where they didn't have confidence in their joke was the Millhouse fence bit. Where yeah. I liked he was following Bart and then the, and the eyes. Eye holes, yeah. Yeah, the eye holes at extreme ends of the fence. That was good. But then he's like. I'm scared. And it's like, no, you had the joke. Stop yeah. overstepping it. Yep. But when Bart and Milhouse are exchanging the notes, I like that he sends him a PDF and it's an actual <laughs> photo, but he's written pretty darn funny. Yep. I was thinking maybe it's too much of an adventure time kind of gag. It needs that sort of world to operate. But mm. with that Milhouse in the, behind the fence thing, because we see the eyes separate across such an instance, I just wanted them to sort of look at each other. But I realized one can look at the other and the second can look at the first and then the first can just turn blood red and then just <laughs> cut away. <laughs> it's begun. <laughs> that's it. And that's your button. You don't need to, yeah, have Milhouse going, why am I like this? Or some yeah, shit exactly. like that. Exactly. Well, yeah. you just need to like refer to some sort of like terrifying dark yeah. universe dwelling yeah. just beneath the surface. <laughs> <laughs> I can be your friend, Millhouse. <laughs> I feel like Grant I'm gonna... us eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm going to take this one with me after this podcast. Ooh, unknown caller. <laughs> Those are the only callers we get these days. Mm-hmm. 
Always scams. And I didn't mind uh, the start of the ostrich fight with Homer, and he's like, all right, give me my phone and nobody gets hurt. Ostrich Heck. punches. Hey, you said no one get hurt. Those were your exact words. I liked that. Mm. Anyway, see how this episode can be pretty polarizing, so let's get into that. Where We rank this thing on the Simpsons Index. We rank using our six-point scale, which starts down the bottom at failure. Maybe if the episode was just a bit meh, you give it participant, but for the positive rankings, you got okay bronze, good silver, excellent gold, but for the best of the very best, the episodes which the Simpsons could not exist without, you give Cubic Zirconia. I'm going to go first, let me show you how it's done. I'm giving it a bronze. It's only just, it's given me enough jokes and enough okay feelings but yeah i recognize that it's littered with problems but Mm -hmm. i I don't dislike it enough to give it a participant i felt like it did enough right shameful bronze (laughs) (laughs) it is a shameful bronze Mm. malloy shameful bronze (laughs) that's what i'm sticking with oh you're going bronze as well yeah i reckon like i think there were merits to it it's not garbage we've definitely seen worse hd era episodes Mm -hmm. while i've been here yeah Um, you've got you've gotten some pretty rough ones i sure have it's like deciding on the episodes i was like oh throw him a break man (laughs) well especially as well because like when we first sort of met and when we first started talking like you knew me as kind of a person who was doing a horror podcast and it's like Mm -hmm. oh he's the horror guy i'll get him in for the horror episodes (laughs) i think you misinterpreted the word (laughs) like (laughs) oh for real bt Man, I'm really split because I feel like the story is definitely a participant. Nothing about this made me angry, but it also didn't really reach above any sort of effort. But I think the jokes are kind of bronzy because I did have a lot of fun with most of them. So at the end of the day, what am I? A man who enjoys a good story or a man who goes and enjoys a good joke? And ultimately, I'm going to have to participate. Oh, you're it, bumping it down. It's a tough call, Oof. but someone had to make it. And apparently that was me. And oh, apparently... yeah, I forgot about participant. Yeah. Mm, mm. <laughs> Am I going to change it? Oh, I don't know. Get a... <laughs> someone need to help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I will. I think I will go to participant. No! I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump it down. Ooh, Thanks, it's BT. so hard That's to right. change a B to a P. I, know. <laughs> I hate when you start chiseling these rankings in stone and then you have to change it. <laughs> yeah, you really have to move on from the tablet system. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that'll equal a shiny participant. It will be the... Ooh, there's a few of them. There will be the... It'll be the sixth episode from season 22 to get a shiny participant. It'll be joining Elementary School Musical, where Lisa hangs out with Flight of the Concords. Uh, yeah. Angry Dad the Movie, where they turn Angry Dad into a movie. Hmm, and we get Academy Award winner Bart Simpson. Academy Award winner Bart Simpson. Hmm. Uh, the Scorpion's Tale, which I still don't get what you hated about that episode. The, I- mostly the CG. I just oh. think the face was really kind of strange. <laughs> the Rock was Speaking good. Speaking of uh, uh, Rachel Weisz, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everything comes I back to she, the mummy. I think she ditched out by that point. Like, she read that one and was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to put The Rock in a starring role? Yeah, that's going to work. <laughs> right. I, like, think about it now. How many movies are there that's going to have The Rock and Rachel Weisz in the same yeah. movie? Yeah. <laughs> I think That's not going to happen anymore. That was a golden era of cinema where anything could happen. Very true i think the issue as well was that they weren't casting the rock they were casting the rock from wwf no mercy and that was the problem <laughs> oh fool you had that like 32-bit era rock <laughs> yeah just smushed up face against one polygon <laughs> yeah oh sorry i lied it'll be the fifth episode from season 22 to get you a shiny participant and the other one is love is a many strangled thing where homer learns to stop strangling bart mm. Mm. weird episode well, they're strangling this season yeah. yep Yep. Mm. All right. Well, let's strangle on out of here and go to the <laughs> teens era where we're going to watch an episode called Blame It on Lisa. Do you guys know what this one is? Hmm. Uh, I'm going to wager that it's, you know, that episode where Bart runs away and he imagines the whole family blaming him for all their problems. It's going to be that, but just on, focused on Lisa. So mm. it's all your fault. It's all your fault. Bart. I reckon she killed Bleeding Gums Murphy. I reckon, I reckon it's a trial. The truth comes forward <laughs> at last. full on Phoenix Wright situation. Where... New DNA evidence is on her. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa's prints were on the Fabergé eggs. Yeah, the, the blood on his gums was Lisa's. <laughs> All along. <laughs> the pieces From fit. self-defense bites. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to watch this harrowing episode. We'll be back. I'm going to be disappointed with anything less. <laughs> And we are back, and we just watched our Teens Hour episode, and this was Season 13, Episode 15, Blame It on Lisa. First released in March of Ought 2, it was directed by Stephen Dean Moore, written by Bob Benditson. 
In this episode, the Simpsons go to Bre- Brazil. I tried to say Rio and Brazil at the same time. Good and, lord. Uh, Rio. Yeah, they went to Brioche. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> Fucking hate Brioche. Any pro- stupid cake bread. <laughs> Any promo things that the Simpsons had to say about Brazil absolutely blown away in the wake of just, Brio. <laughs> I was just ready to dance around it, but uh, the stupid tongue and it's not been able to do things. Yeah, anyway, so yeah, the Simpsons go to Brazil. Guys, what'd you think? <laughs> Yeah, it was okay. It was okay. It was, like, familiar as well. Mm. And it's mm. one of those things where, like, it's one of those episodes is like, oh, I reference this all the time mm. because I am constantly in the habit of responding to questions with, see! <laughs> 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 Had a nice momentum and carried it all. It wasn't, like, the, a most stellar plot, but it, you know, ran quite well. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, so I decided to do this one because we've actually surprisingly been referencing this episode just out of coincidence quite a lot lately because obviously uh, the big thing about this episode is that Brazil did not like it. And I don't think it was constantly as probo as maybe outright offence should dictate, but like there were definitely a few key bits where they were like, uh, and sort of their depictions and stuff, um, so I get it. So yeah, Brazil had a negative response, and James L. Brooks, after the response came out, was like, oh, we're really sorry, you know, best of intentions and all that, and yeah, we're sorry if we offended our beautiful Brazilian fans. But since then, Simpsons have made a lot of references to Brazil being jabs, yeah. a bad place. And yeah, they don't respond well to criticism. <laughs> hey, yeah. I mean, look at the Apu situation. (laughs) Exactly. And yeah, they've doubled down on these horrible Brazilian jokes where if you could go, this was an isolated thing, they probably didn't realise, oh, okay, we shouldn't have put so much emphasis on street crime and hostage taking and all that sort of stuff. But they've since doubled, tripled, quadrupled down on it and... It sucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Serene, you could easily say, oh, look, it was a one-off silly episode. How about you not take yourself less seriously, Brazil? But when you continually make those jabs, it becomes a vendetta. Well, the other thing mm. is, like, Al Jean was even quoted as saying, I don't get it. Every other country had a relatively good sense of humor about it. And it's like, yeah, but you weren't calling Australians kidnappers and street crime. They literally have a line saying it was founded by criminals, Lisa watch your pocketbook, and every single Australian is going, ah, reaching for a pocketbook at that moment. (laughs) To be fair, we were. To be fair, that's absolutely (laughs) Also, I mean, like, to the people of Brazil, I can understand your chagrin, but they call our money dollary (laughs) dues. Like, you think we forget? You think we forgive? (laughs) And that's the other, like, yeah, as shit as the joke is about uh, the money being gay or whatever, it's like, this doesn't land for us, because, yeah, Yeah. that's pretty much our money. (laughs) Mm. Yep. Pinks and purples. <laughs> yep. So let's uh, try and tackle this episode now today. Uh, BT, what stands out to you? I completely forgot to do this bit. Let me have a look. David, what stands out to you? <laughs> Just better gags. Just like better, more confident gags. Even the ones that don't land have a lot of confidence, but the ones that do land, land <laughs> real even jokes that feel like they should have aged terribly that just fucking got all of us Mm. like early on when they go into the phone company to complain about their bill and they're like they're speaking to a woman they're like we've met you several times why does your job description keep changing she says I'm a sexual predator that was (laughs) unexpected it's so rough but god it's good and again I feel like that's a joke where the world changed not necessarily progressive but just these became bigger issues that you wouldn't make jokes about anymore rather than the back of the day that would have just not been a big deal it was just a one off line it's just like oh that hits very differently now and because well they've done this South Park sort of thing of mm. like also the fact that it's a woman yeah. who's making the joke so the response is just nice <laughs> mm. yeah I mean I gotta say I think the phone company stuff was some of my more favourite material like especially that guy who's like hello ma'am would you like to hear more about long distance or whatever and he's like oh, she hung up on me <laughs> what, what did I do the other guy's it's just so consoling good. just the complete meltdown is fucking hilarious it's beautiful I do really like they walk past the uh, Android switchboard operators mm. <laughs> I was like that's a good little that was very proto Futurama yeah high tech low tech moment <laughs> but I found my uh, note I'd like to talk about which was the multiple references to nuns oh yeah I did like at the beginning it's like why did you stay on the phone for so long oh I can't hang up on a nun mom is like, Marge is like yes they have powers mm. <laughs> and I do like that it's Marge saying it <laughs> instead yeah. of Homer and then later on when uh, oh, Homer God. thinks there's a flying nun just jumps on her back and says fly oh nuns cannot fly Ah, too much junk in the truck. 
the <laughs> just, uh, that's just, sad. And, that's and just sad to point case. out then as well, apparently a couple of things I got wrong. Apparently, yeah, the way you say yes in Brazilian Portuguese is sim, not si. Oh, interesting. Or maybe seem. Seem. Uh, and maybe I didn't hear that M. But yeah, I would caught that on her and the yes guy and I thought I'd look it up and... Because, yeah, I was doing a fair amount of Googling. Was Is this Brazilian? Is this Brazilian? Yeah. Well, one of the things that's interesting about the way that they sort of work to kind of make these jokes that stereotype the country and everything, the same way mm. they did with Australia, the same they did, way they did with England, with everyone, yeah. and the way that you play on, like, this is just all of the actors from The Simpsons who are doing a vaguely Hispanic accent. Like, probably the best gag in all of that is Bart learning how to speak fluent Spanish. Mm. <laughs> And then finding out that they speak Portuguese and just like <laughs> swearing fluently in Spanish is fucking great. Like that's so good. Like that's Nancy Cartwright absolutely nailing it. Yeah. Well, they all swears. Oh, I don't know. I, uh, I mean, like they they might have been made up, which is not as good, but it sounded pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Contextually, but, I think it was just he just said. So I learned all this for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and like, it's and like if that's a literal translation, that's a great bit. And yeah. it's like Nancy delivered it so well, you know. Very fluid. Well, yeah, and especially making light of the because because that was one of their criticisms um Brazilian writer was complaining about is that yeah, these were vaguely Hispanic accents. It didn't yeah. have a like a Portuguese style flair mm. to it. Yeah, true. So, I mean, I don't know what that is. Yeah, me either. <laughs> I haven't been to Brazil, neither of you guys. No. I've been close. I had my honeymoon in Chile and Peru. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I have been to the Amazon, but I haven't mm. been to Brazil. Yeah, I've been to the uh, Amazon too. Wait, no. Have I? I've shopped on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> and what stands out to me for better or worse? Uh, the children's entertainment, I guess. Uh, so yeah. the show that Bart's watching is apparently a parody of a woman called Zuxa, spelled X-U-X-A, uh, who was a prominent children's entertainer. That uh, Some of it had made its way over to America, more on one of those, you know, in much the same way that they'd sort of like get clips from Japanese shows and go, oh, look at this, Isn't, uh, aren't they weird? Yeah. Yeah, it's sort of the same way that sort of Zooks' stuff would make their way over. Yeah, I'm Googling her and I'm thoroughly disappointed. So, <laughs> no Dare I ask why? You're going to get yourself cancelled. <laughs> it's just very tame. She's just like in a lot of, lot of hypercolor normal, yeah. normalness. She's a children's entertainer. <laughs> yeah, so um, Simpsons, you I misled me. I think you've missed the gag here, BT. <laughs> <laughs> I was promised boobs. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I do like this part of the episode as an exploration of, you know, America's and, you know, frankly, Australia's as well, like uh, a conservative nature around sex and mm -hmm. how that's, oh, it's so offensive. Why would you show the children? And it's like, well, violence is technically worse. Like, mm -hmm. uh, and I thought there was, yeah, a sense of an exploration of that. But I mean, yeah, I mean, this whole episode does start with an itchy and scratchy episode. Them just yeah. golfing off. Oh, scratchy's good head. Point. Yeah. And it's like, that's normal and it's ac acceptable. And I do enjoy any Simpsons episode that starts with them watching television. Yep, absolutely. And oh, this itchy and scratchy was a good, neat little bit. Yeah, that was all mm. right. Yeah. And calling him a catty, not bad. And it's like, ah, nice follow through. Ah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, nice and neat. And unlike that other one, which was just, what's with all these pre 1960s characters beating up, killing Pluto? Yeah. I, mm. I feel like on that stuff you were talking about, a Brazil sort of having a rough response. We're, we're talking about Brazil as if it's one person who's just sort of <laughs> shaking their fist. Yeah. Um, all 150 million or whatever. <laughs> Shake harder, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Every single one was offended. <laughs> yeah. So it's sort of like what you choose to make fun of, right? And I feel like the times that they've really done these great gags, sort of like, here's what other countries are like kind mm -hmm. of gags often when they're pointing out stuff on the tv like the stuff about japanese tv was kind of funny the mm -hmm. stuff about like brazilian tv was kind of funny yeah uh, well, but... what's that one where they hit each other with cricket bats <laughs> i was watching some like british oh, show. do shut up do shut up <laughs> <laughs> yeah and they're like it's the most successful longest running television show and we'll show you all 10 episodes today <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's like good stuff but then it's like when they're trying to get into these sort of like larger cultural things mm. they have one great gag around oh mm. they love soccer here like yeah. that's a great <laughs> sight gag that whole section mm. and then they're like 
I guess we make fun of the favelas. It's like, oh, really? Yeah, I think that's maybe the simple guideline is you can make fun of their pop culture products, but not necessarily the culture itself. Not their actual socioeconomic yeah. problems. <laughs> yeah. That's just elitism. That's just mm-hmm. you going, isn't America great? And it's like, That Ugh. said, I do really like when Lisa's all like, oh, they painted these slums bright colors for the tourists. And Marge's like, well, it works for me. But yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good because it's yeah. lampooning the American response yeah, to yeah. it, right? Like, that's good shit. No, it's and, and they, they look at the rats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I do like sometimes you just get the most random notes, and one is just brightly colored rats. Thumbs up. Mm. I mean, I think you're right about the socioeconomic thing, and I'm trying to work out. Yeah, BT, good point. They did make that convict joke in Australia, but mm. I felt like because so much of that was heightened to weird degrees, and especially like the booting, you know, we don't <laughs> have capital punishment, unlike some <laughs> American states still. Yeah. <laughs> it's also a joke about white people in an incredibly rich country. I think yeah. we can cop the gag. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> but how was the wackiness in this episode? Heightened. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the thing that's going to be one of the big sticking points of this episode for me. There is a lot of whiteboard writing in this one. Mm -hmm. It's just a whole big list of Brazilian things and landmarks and places. It's carnival. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like, they do, I think, land a couple of good jokes. Like, I like the Jesus statue thing, and and Homer's like, ah, he's like, he's sitting on the dashboard of the country. Mm -hmm. Uh, I enjoyed that. I also enjoy that they conga line everywhere. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> that's a Caribbean dance. It is not <laughs> Brazilian. <laughs> well, dang it. Yep. I oh, know. Good bit, though. But mm. yeah, wrong place. Okay, also, how about they weren't the... congering like they meant it. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't make me shock you. Um, how about the pilot announcing that it's the current temperature is hot, hot, hot with a 100% chance of passion? Mm. But... Okay, I kind of like that. That joke was what made you fall in love with me. <laughs> yeah, that was one where I really... Uh, but again, that's that vague Hispanic yeah, passion. Yeah. Like, I've been making that joke about Spanish as a language mm-hmm. for ages, and I think it's the same thing that everyone does with South America. It's just yeah. like, it's not even that it's offensive, it's just a, a bit lazy. Yeah, yeah, and especially when it's that same Hank Azaria, Julio voice that... <laughs> Which, which I've got to admit, did work for me when it's like, I am like sugar to the monkeys. <laughs> like, it still yeah. worked for that. <laughs> that was a weird button that I get. I really like that. Monkeys chasing him into the house, eh, but him being like, I am like sugar to them. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I, co- I couldn't confirm whether street monkeys were actually a problem in Brazil, but when I was in Uganda, yeah, they're a problem there. Right. Like, yeah, wow, where was the footage of like, sorry, I didn't mean to step on your, your story there. Um. No, it's okay. Just like <laughs> Uganda, uh, that's cool. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> no, just uh, like the place we were staying, like all the barbed wire fencing, and we're like, oh, is that for our protection? No, it's to stop the monkeys. <laughs> and like they had this thing where it's like a ring of barbed wire around the top of a fence, you know. And we were just watching this one monkey who was like carefully walking through the middle of the tunnel, like he's playing a game of don't touch the edge because he you is. Know, he we is. Don't want <laughs> yeah, and then he just managed to get close enough to the uh, the breakfast buffet. Run down, take a bunch of bananas, run back up, get back through the tunnel, walking closely. <laughs> mm-hmm. Good but bit. Pam has a photo of the hot spring monkeys from um, from oh, Japan cool. stealing a packet of Mentos out of my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> even cooler. <laughs> I thought those were like laid back, chilled monkeys. They don't even have the energy to steal. They're just they're very laid back and chilled. I mean, they've got more energy than you'd think, particularly because like the ones in the hot springs are the alphas. And so, if any of the betas, like any of the younger monkeys, go anywhere near the spring, they have enough energy to be like, "Get the fuck out!" <laughs> like, really? yeah, yeah, like really go for them. <laughs> wow. Wow, territorial over the hot springs. Sorry, I can yeah. see you quietly dying over there, Beach. <laughs> well, I googled Brazilian monkey problem, and oh, most are go. about how, you know, the uh, golden lion monkeys are now catching yellow fever and are endangered. That's oh. sad. Then I got to a post from 2016 entitled, Furious George, Monkey in Brazil Drinks Rum and Chases Bar Patrons with a Knife. <laughs> <laughs> so... There's a video. <laughs> the person who came um, up with that headline, give them a promotion And took it from The Simpsons, thank you very much. Oh, shit, shit. okay. Furious George, what have they done to your face? <laughs> Smithers, this monkey's going to need most of your skin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, yeah. Uh, Damn, dude. Uh, I feel betrayed. I, cl- I opened the link. There's no video. <laughs> Clickbait. <laughs> I know. The Guardian, what are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, well, I was going to say, where was that? Remember, like, peak COVID, there was just, like, video because the streets were empty and there was a video of just monkeys roaming the streets looking yeah. for blood. Goats who had taken over. <laughs> They'd installed a goat as mayor in one of the Welsh cities. Am I remembering this right? Didn't a bunch of baboons get loose in Newtown? 
Yeah. Dude. Oh yes. No, no, no. You're right. Yeah, because they escaped from a lab. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was one of those yeah things that just raised more questions. Baboons in Newtown. Yeah. They were at the hospital. What? Um, American listeners, this is not a joke. <laughs> it's a hundred percent true. I thought you were just having heat stroke again. <laughs> Maybe. Look, both are true. <laughs> Any other wacky moments? No, I'm busy thinking about knife wielding drunk monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> I've been distracted. I'm very sorry. Um, I do like when they're riding up the cable car and the music's all. Nah, 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 nah. Marge is like, oh, this is so tense. And Bart just changes the channel. <laughs> yeah, it feels like it's making fun of it. Dun, dun, dun. That's it. That's the Steve. <laughs> yep. That's it's the Simpsons good, It's one. a good meta bit. Like, Actually, it's just well done. There's a lot of back and forth in that ex- the final scene on this with the exchange. We're like, uh, Homer made them a scrapbook because he's got uh, Stockholm Syndrome now. Yeah. <laughs> So they let me stay up all night. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the best thing from that was just like them with him in the back of the boat going down the Amazon. <laughs> and they're just like, don't be silly. And take that bag off your head. <laughs> <laughs> smells like cinnamon. <laughs> and also when he's um, calling everyone he knows, trying to get 50 grand, he calls up and I was like, oh, homie, you got to give me 50 grand. What? You need me to give me 50 grand. <laughs> uh, I, I asked you first. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Flanders, I need 100 grand. <laughs> There were some good bits in amongst that all. Like, oh, uh, has either of you guys ever been to one of those uh, meets on a sword restaurants as well? Oh uh, yeah, Brazilian Hell barbecue. Yeah. Mm. Surprisingly there is a, not. There is a Chilean special which is literally I can't remember the name of it, but it's just like chips and a stack of meat, just a mountain of meat mm. just put on top of it. They are about that shit. Yeah, uh, I was blocked up for like a week after. <laughs> But yeah, the usual MO is, yeah, guys with lots of meat on swords will just will walk around and it's like, would you like? Yeah. A- and it's great. I tried everything except the chicken hearts and I kind of regret it because mm. it is such a delicacy over there. I feel like right. yeah, if yeah. Ever, ever time I probably could have done it and right there. When in a Rio barbecue joint, do mm. eat like the Rio ones do? Yeah, that's what yeah, my mom used say, to say. Yeah. It was not, not <laughs> a good bit. <laughs> Wait, I mean, as well, it's just like, it's emblematic of like a resourcefulness as well. Mm. It's like, we we are very used to like, yeah. we eat the chicken breast and then you throw the can away. Yeah. And like, yeah. yeah whereas, You're like, ew, chicken feet. Why would you? It's like, oh, yeah, it's like do. in the Philippines, like a very classic street food is just a chicken intestines on a stick and you like barbecue that shit and nom, nom, nom. Yeah. And it's just like, they just eat the whole thing. It's yeah. like, well, that makes sense. Yeah. It's also kind of always fun to be in a country where the concept of vegetarianism is like, <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The vegetarian thing we have. Rice. <laughs> oh, cool. I'll have that again. No, it's like, oh, we've got chicken. No, no, vegetarian. I don't need any meat. Oh, we have fish. No. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the vegetables of the sea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was in, where was it? I think it was Spain, where I was uh, there with my, at the time, vegetarian girlfriend, and for some reason who didn't learn enough of the language, but I did, to tell waiters what not to bring her. <laughs> <laughs> it was complicated. They were confused. Non pollo, non carne, non... <laughs> yeah, non pescado. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh, bull? No, no. <laughs> but yeah, there is a bit more wackiness to go over, but how about the heart of this episode? Did you feel the bumps? I mean, it's got a big heart shift where it starts off as uh, the search for Lisa's sponsor child and then becomes home as kidnapping. Little, I mean, the, the the inciting incident has some heart behind it. Yeah, technically. I don't, I don't feel I, I wouldn't it. say I feel it. The concept is there. Yeah. I think maybe I'm just placing too high an expectation on it where I want some sort of, like, actual emotional arc for mm. Lisa in terms of, like you know, doing charity for this boy. It's, like, totally fine that he ends up being, like, you know, sort of this TV celebrity and everything, but Mm -hmm. it doesn't feel bumpy. It's just sort of, it's very throwaway. Oh, this is the way that the writers managed to get the money to the situation. Yeah. Well, no, and that's sort of the problem is that, yeah, it starts out with a good enough story, but then it becomes the Homer show, and that's Mm -hmm. sort of... Even though I liked some of his more Stockholm syndrome (laughs) moments and being, yeah, a golden retriever of a kidnap victim... Like, I don't like that he kind of steals the show. And mm. even, like, leading up to that, most of the gags were Homer-centric. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. I will say, I think Homer's kidnapping is the funniest part, especially when he gets in the unmarked, ki- labelled unlicensed cab. And then he's like, this is a kidnapping. Oh, so I don't have to pay for the fare? Uh, I mean, I guess not. But uh, you <laughs> feel like you're not taking this seriously. <laughs> take me, but don't take the boy. He has already run away. <laughs> <laughs> and even Bart, like, just casually strolling away and then gets back to the hotel and yeah. just chucks on TV. It's like, well, what do we do? I don't know. Wait for the call. So, yeah. <laughs> Even we with my high narrative expectations, though, like, it's always the dumb stuff that just, like, actually sings out to me is the best. Like, you know, like, oh, my, what is it, is the size of a Brazil nut? And they're like, we just called them nuts here. Oh, it's such a dumb joke. It's so dumb. It was good. It was good. <laughs> but ultimately, 
Bentley? Did it feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Are these the characters we know and love? Certainly early teen style, yeah. This is high wacky, but you're still having a good enough time. Yeah, and I, I think the one that seems the most like the characters I love is probably Marge. Yeah. Mm. Like that sense of she's a moral core to a degree, but she also has those moments of American conservatism that mm. come out in little ways. And it's just sort of like, oh, that's oh, that's kind of an ugly thing. And yeah. It's like, it's great. I, I actually really like that sort of version of her character. No, definitely. And yeah, we've definitely explored this a lot where she's like, the tradition has sort of worked for her, so she's yeah. never questioned it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do kind of like the one where um, Lisa's talking about, ah, oh, you know, uh, someone who's kissed more boys than she has. And she's like, girls, Lisa, boys kiss girls. Not out of like a homophobia <laughs> angle, but out of a this is the tradition kind of yeah. angle. Yeah. You know? yeah, she is like turning a blind eye is like habitual. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I guess like everyone's pretty on. Of, I mean... It's sort of weird because, like, The Simpsons' go-to has now, by this point, become, even in O2, it's become, like, a cliche. Mm. A little bit, yeah. So, I feel like we're kind of just going through the motions of a go-to episode rather than an actual Simpsons episode. Mm. Yeah. That said, I do like that we definitely get some Golden Retriever Homer, which is the best yeah. kind of Homer. That, I think, it, does a lot for this episode. Because he's not so malicious. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's early what on makes him... Is. A little bit, yeah. Uh, well, and specifically to Bart, which yeah. I guess is just, like, you know, pandering to what that already done. Mm. But so much of the HD Simpsons, like, he can be sort oh, yeah. of, like, quite willfully mean. Yeah. yeah. It just doesn't work for him. Yeah, there's a bit of, I'd say, more dumb meanness going on in here. There's a few, like, extended dumb homo jokes. Like, that one where he drinks the super sweet drink was like, why is this happening? What is this? This feels like a reference you don't know unless you've vacationed in Brazil. Yeah, but it's just like, if you're going for mean jokes, Mm. then go for... That's a Mr. Burns moment. That's a Mo moment. They're the mean characters. Yeah, yeah. Like, Mm. and it tracks with their character and it works. But when Homer is sort of like nasty to people it's yeah, just sort it of feels it, wrong yeah just... it's watching a golden tree retriever bite someone and go oh he normally doesn't do this <laughs> yeah well i mean the worst part of the jerk ass homer thing is when he's like being deceptive or mm. he's like yeah being two-faced or whatever he's just not going through life and just screwing up like yeah. without realizing yeah yeah uh yes or no would you watch this one again yeah, probably. Yeah, I wouldn't let go time. out of my way to hunt it down. It's definitely one that I'd forgotten a lot of the major mm. beats of, but it was like, oh, the Simpsons are going to Brazil. It's like, oh, yeah, this one. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, episodes we uh, consider watching again, we like to think about what playlist we might put this in. What are some other episodes that would pair nicely with this one? Mm. Simpsons Travel. Yeah. yeah. Lisa's Pen Pals. Oh, yeah. This is one where she had another South American friend who was replaced by the glorious <laughs> General Tar or something like that. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, that was in Cape Fear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sincerely, little, little girl. girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, now that's that I good. I think about it, God, that is a pitch black joke. It, it's real pitch black, but it's so, because <laughs> the tone of it is so not pitch black. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, that's good. Like, can you even <laughs> picture the handwriting change in that one as well? Because <laughs> <laughs> the voice acting sells it so fucking yeah. well. <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, move on to another question. How about this one? BT, what would you like to change? Hmm. Yeah, I would like to, as much as I did enjoy the Homer stuff, I kind of agree that it does derail the plot we had for this, Hmm. you know, Homer show plot. So, you know, let's float some other ideas around, see what else we can get. That said, yeah, some of my favorite jokes are in the whole Homer kidnapping bit. So at least keep your A plot alive for a bit longer or a bit more concurrent to the kidnapping, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, there's something there. Uh, How about you, David? What would you like to change? Just again, punch up. Yeah. Punch, punch up, find yep. better targets in Brazil. I, I think they're definitely there. Mm-hmm. You can make fun of Brazil and Brazilians, but like do so in a way that is not just like, ah, some of them are poor. You yeah. Know? Like I think the over-sexualization thing is kind of like well done, right? Like yeah. that's, it's deeply hypocritical, but it's also <laughs> like, it's a, it's a well-known thing about mm-hmm. like South American TV in general. That's soup and Brazil especially. Like I think the beach sequence is like a good example mm-hmm. of it, right? That's sort of like, we have a dress code here it's like speed yeah. <laughs> but then i feel like they overstep it with like i like homer's ass enveloping both speedos but then like everyone being grossed out by him at the beach is like uh it's tyson. come on I yeah although i didn't i didn't I... terribly mind the no 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 like what, he throws sand, sand in her eyes. Eyes. <laughs> a jellyfish was a bit much jellyfish was too much yeah yeah but 
yeah, it just went on way too long. And, like, actually, that whole scene of the Homer getting juiced because then she's distracting him so the kids can rob him, like, that sucks. Yeah. Mm. And, yeah, there's just, yeah, fix some of the Provo shit. And, yeah, references thought... to Congas and Macarenas, which aren't Brazilian yeah, dancers. But I will say, when she said that whole, you know, Lisa's like, oh, we need to find Ronaldo for her to go, Ronaldo, I want the follow up line when Lisa's like, oh, do you know him? But, like, it's an incredibly common name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I should say as well on that over sexualization thing is the <laughs> inventing the new dance the <laughs> penetrata <laughs> it makes sex look like a church <laughs> like that's good i love that that was hilarious oh yeah uh simpson sexy dancing playlist uh yeah, yes. the tango the, del amor thing yes <laughs> you are not pregnant with my child but how it is a mystery of the dance <laughs> <laughs> all right we're here david do you have any other notes the couch gag of Matt Groening as the puppeteer, mm. just sort of getting, like, the strings getting all tangled and throwing it down. <laughs> That's the HD era. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't imagine Matt Groening's got much, if anything, to do with it anymore. Yeah. He's like, what, the Simpsons are still on? Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> what are they up to? 32. Fuck off. There That's how go. old I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. What? <laughs> <laughs> BT, any other notes? No, oh, of course. Oh, sorry, was that all your notes? That was all my notes. That's all his notes. BT, any other notes? Combining a dance that makes sex look like a judge. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that is just too much fun. <laughs> the sign off to that joke is a bit lame, though, where he's just sort of like, you're stupid lady. <laughs> I kind of liked it because it felt like he was going for a zinger and didn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it is admittedly hard to do in a scripted show to have someone like not land a line, but yeah. I kind of felt like it worked. He's like, I, did, uh, I didn't have anything. Well, I guess, I guess you write it for the comics that you know can sell yeah. that kind of failure well. For sure. Yeah, and just on that as well, I thought the soccer joke, like, that was really cool animation of, yeah, the mm -hmm. hotel being obsessed with soccer. and But, yeah, then Homer's follow-up with the breaking suitcase and the how to loop Brazil. Uh, nah. Yeah, yeah it, it just wasn't anything. Sucked. Yeah. Sorry, more notes. Yes, uh, Homer's reading Blue Pant Weekly. I enjoyed that. Yep, another good Simpsons Magazine joke. I enjoyed uh, I also like when it's, they find out Lisa was the one who called Brazil, and Homer's like, Lisa? The one we both like? <laughs> and yeah, just a little visual thing of Bucko. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but also like after Homer finished strangling him in that earlier sequence, like he was still rubbing his neck. There were real moments where I was like, oh, poor Bud. Yeah, <laughs> like, and yeah, we've hit on an accidental strangulation playlist. Yeah, Fine. yeah, yeah. Um, Ronaldo then says, I tried to write you, but I didn't know what state you were in. It's like, okay, that's that's still fresh enough in this, what season is this, 15? 13. 13, that's like, okay, you can still play that. Mm. Uh, and then we'll end it on a negative, which was Bart dancing when he was swallowed by a snake. Yep, yeah. really shit button for the episode to end like, They on. didn't know how to end this. Like, okay, the cable car falls, and... Um, it's They're all fine. Jurassic and, uh, Park 3 style, like, <laughs> hectic gondola crash. Yeah. It's all rotating. <laughs> and it's fine. Yeah, that's another problem that I had, that they were going for this, like, tense moment, but none of it felt that way in the slightest, mm. and they kind of rushed to the ending in that oh, yeah. way as well. Like, I mean, I don't know how to ride out of that corner, but yeah, not The that, Simpsons no. died on the way home to their home planet. <laughs> <laughs> kind of felt like that. They were replaced by clones. All right, and some of my final notes... I didn't mind the bit about the uh, phone companies changing their names all the time. Yeah. And, like, I didn't like Homer's initial cry, but him crying when Marge and Bart were, <laughs> we're trying to figure out. It. Isn't it Comquack? No, it's Comucorp. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like this is maybe a little bit more of reference to a time and place when that was actually happening in America. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah it's, uh, same joke here. Not about phone companies, but uh, the Acer Arena yeah. is my constant reference. <laughs> all phones arena. Yes. It's cute. That's Bank exactly arena what now. I thought of, too. <laughs> I think it's Qantas Arena now. I guess that's why the, there's like a thread of that joke that we can still appreciate, but it's mm. why the she hung up on me yeah. is so <laughs> universal and so yeah. funny. Yeah, exactly. Um, Lindsay Nagel only has a ponytail in this episode, so Homer can make the cutoff ponytail joke, and yeah. I hate it because of that. Or mm. um, well, maybe he did, and that's the style she went with. Ah, mm. uh, uh, origin story in a cut scene. Lindsay begins. <laughs> I had to look this up because I had a suspicion that it wasn't Brazilian. Uh, the mm -hmm. fruit hat bit, yeah. which I kind of like because the minibar hat as well. Yeah. So the fruit hat is actually very much an American invention, but it was yeah. popularized by Brazilian dancer Carmen Miranda. I think that's fair enough. Mm -hmm. Right. There you go. Oh, and uh, Ronaldo's job was as Flamenco Flamingo. Flamenco is from Spain. And I do like the joke. Remember when you put the cigarette butt out of my arm? <laughs> you slept like a baby that night. 
I feel like they got a bit of the Stockholm Syndrome as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Reverse Stockholm yeah, Syndrome. I was just trying to think what's that going to be. I'm sure there's a German word for what's it. What's the opposite of Stockholm? <laughs> Sorry, that was a joke from yeah. the previous episode that I forgot to bring up. Perth? Because I liked it. <laughs> Perth <laughs> Syndrome. It's about as opposite of Stockholm as you can get. <laughs> it's time to rank this thing. Beach, you're going first this time. I'm going to go with a bronze. It's not that it's an amazing story better than the last one, but it was just better paced and it kind of just ran with it a lot more um, and had some fun. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. I kind of... It's got its problems, but I had fun, so... Yeah, I feel like, yeah, there's definitely some Probo elements to it, but... It's the light edge of Probo, for sure. Mm. Yeah. I don't think it's super mean-spirited, even though there's a few punching down moments, Mm. which... I'm uncomfortable with and uh but yeah I'm going with bronze as well like mostly the just yeah a mix of flat and good jokes but I feel like having this episode in the last episode was actually a good comparison because mm. I think they're doing a lot of similar things poorly. Dave, what would you true. like to go? BT's been calling my plays all night. This is going to be a bronze. All right, triple Bs. Mm-hmm. That'll be a unanimous bronze. It'll be the fourth episode from season 13 to get this ranking. It'll be joining Homer the Mo, where Homer becomes the Mo. Oh. The no. lastest gun in the West, where Bart gets obsessed with a drunken cowboy dude. I've seen drunker. <laughs> and the frying game, where it's a charming little story about the screamer pillar that turns into that oh, uh, yeah. Homer and Marge murder an old woman reality show twist. Yeah. Wacky times. Mm. Yeah. It's sexually attracted to fire. I only, <laughs> I only remember the screamer pillar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, the rest of it is very forgettable. All right. Let's go to the classic era. And this is true to the classic era. No clever titles or puns or anything. Just gets the point of the plot. But dog gets an F. Anyone knows this episode? Probably. <laughs> you know, assume... Gets an F is like euphemism for gets laid. What's the so, one? Uh, <laughs> Bart's dog gets a fuck. <laughs> gets it, uh, I was going to say it's the one that's like also it's just punching down because Bart's dog speaks English as a second language. Yeah. I just yeah. think it's like pretty rough, man. Oh, like, just oh shit. I didn't intend that. <laughs> yes, you so, did. No, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no to be fair, say, in the first episode, he, made a, he said rough a few times and I kept going to call to it. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, I don't want to. It's, I'll it's show rough. myself out. <laughs> Oh, pun intentional. We're going to get out of here and watch that, and uh, we'll be back. (laughs) Good Lord. Ruff, you've been pitching that all night. (laughs) (laughs) Judy. And we are back, and we just watched our classic era episode, and this is uh, it's about as classic as you get. Season 2, episode 16, Bart's Dog Gets an F. First released in March of 1991, it was directed by Jim Reard and written by John Vitti in this episode. Santa's little helper is just chewing up fucking everything, mm. and the uh, parents are threatening to send him away, and Bart takes him to dog obedience school, and yeah. Guys, what'd you think? You were really just going to say dog school then, weren't you? <laughs> dog school. Coming to Fox. Uh, no, really good. Yeah. Mm. Very charming, yeah. heartwarming days of The Simpsons where Homer's still a bit of that authority figure who's yeah, yeah. barking himself a bit, ironically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Not malicious, but just a bit selfish. Yeah. And yeah. a bit dumb. Yeah. B- a bit angry dad. Yeah, bit yeah, angry yeah, dad, sure. yeah. Yeah, this one's overall a little bit lighter on the jokes, but it's got the, the bumps. Holy shit, has it got the bumps. So much bumps. Mm-hmm. And yeah, especially going back to being a dog person, I am such a dog person through and through. I don't have anything against cats. I just don't get them. I get dogs. And yeah, this one always hit home for me because yeah, I, I remember growing up, I'd hate it if that happened to any of my dogs. <laughs> for sure, yeah. Mm. Um, also, once again, hits real close to home because like I own two Dashens and these destructive little motherfuckers, <laughs> yeah. my God. Like we came home and found like a wedding card and <laughs> just like shredded in the middle of the lounge room. It's like, <laughs> my Lord. <laughs> and, like, yeah. Which one are you pastors to? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, there's times I feel for Santa's little helper because, like, yeah, I had a couple of dogs growing up that, you know, you just knew not to leave certain things out because mm-hmm. they'd get to them and at a certain point, it's your fault. You can't tell the dog, mm-hmm. no, this specific item you do not eat. Mm-hmm. This is people food, not you food. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, Homer, that cookie on the table out of the yeah. jar. I'm sorry, dude, that's on you. I also got, like, as a dog owner, I'm like, that's chocolate chip, that'll kill the poor dog <laughs> like mm-hmm. please no mm. oh you said it was uh macadamia. also macadamia nuts which probably oh, aren't true. also good either yeah <laughs> lots of things that are bad for dogs are very com- is very confusing 
So yeah. this is a bad story for me, but I do remember when, I don't know, I think I was like nine or something, and I saw my brother was giving our dogs cookies, and he was like making them sit and stand and shake hands and all mm-hmm. of that. And I was like, he's feeding them cookies? And I'm not thinking, you know, chocolate's bad for dogs. I'm thinking, I want a cookie. <laughs> and so I immediately <laughs> sit in front of him, he gives it to me, and he, he sat, goes, yeah. He shook yeah. hands. And yeah, he gave it to me, and I'm like, what is this? And he it just holds up the box and it's like cookies for dogs. Like, because it tasted weird because it was like carob or some shit that's like fine for dogs. <laughs> Held and, up the box and said cookies for vegans. <laughs> like, no! no! <laughs> um, but yeah, I love this fucking episode. Let's hook into it. David, for better or worse, what's a moment that stands out to you? I think for me, it's rekindling a love that I had thought lost. Mm. I had entirely forgotten about this character of the dog trainer. Yeah. Ah. She is magnificent. Yeah. She is so good. Also, a beautiful thing is growing up having watched these on Channel 10 where they're clearly censored. Mm. So a lot yes. of her best lines are like complete new discoveries to me. <laughs> this was a joy. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the final line at the end when Santa's little <laughs> helper is doing well. I swear that was cut. <laughs> yeah, son of a it, it definitely was. You <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> and it's a good joke in context yeah. and it's great. And oh, love it. Not only that, I thought, I think the bit where Marge is showing off her callus, I remember the needle pricking. I don't remember there being <laughs> holding a lighter, lighter. to her finger. <laughs> fucking Zippo lighter. It's just like, yeah, I mean, I got calluses too. I'm not going to fucking do that. <laughs> it's like, why cut that too? It's I just know. so ridiculous. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I loved it. It's like, holy crap, Marge is hardcore. Yeah. Like, Watch me hold my hand over a candle. <laughs> I think the only other thing that was cut was something about the check chain thing where she was saying like, oh, I can assure you, they're always breathing. Yeah. <laughs> no, th- and those scenes were brutal as well. Mm. And, I- and I thought it was good because, yeah, in the end it wasn't, yeah, the choke chain or the uh, negative discipline mm. that taught the dog it was emotion, even though it's kind of flimsy at the end, but even still. Though, but sure. I do like, that's how they reinforce a lot of this, is switching to Santa's little helper, and they do it really early on. So good. Just that blah, 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 blah how none of it's connecting, and he just sees, you know, Homer's plate of bacon, and it turns into his dog bowl, and then back again. It's that old perspective trick. Well, a good thing here is, and maybe that's what was missing from how much does that birdie in the window, is we never got Santa's Little Helper's perspective, really. And in this episode, we get it so much. It's just, yeah, he's seeing the world through black and white, a fisheye lens, and most people are just rah, 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 rah to him. Like, how's he meant to learn? Just simultaneously also, like, a take on that Friday the 13th. Yeah, Yeah. I was going to (laughs) say, especially with Homer's cookie and him just lunging for it and cutting away before he actually goes. It's like, that's very the last shot of Friday the 13th. And the soundtrack that is very... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and going back to Marge's callous when Lisa gets one, they have a weird ET moment as well. There's a couple of odd references to movies in this, yeah. But actually, as well, like, building a real emotional connection between Lisa and and Marge over Mm. this quilt. Yeah, And then, like, the destruction of the quilt is, like, that's a big, awful thing that happens. As Marge says, six generations at this point. Now that Lisa's added her square, that's that's history. Yeah, that's That's rough. And so, yeah, the, again, like, all the work that they've done to build those familiar relationships, once again, like, Bart and Lisa just being really wholesome and lovely. Yeah. But, like, yeah, Lisa and Marge particularly, all of this work that's done that is really wounded by this thing that mm-hmm. the dog does unthinkingly is just is just great, like, sitcom writing. Yeah, and that's it. And at that moment, you know, Quilt's gone, Cookie's gone, time for a family meeting. You know, it was a big discussion around it. It was a hard decision that the family had to work through. Yeah. That just wasn't there in uh, Munchy Birdie. Yeah, and I like that the ad break is on just Homer going, blah, 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 and just pointing. You get it without eight words. It Again, r- yeah, reinforcing the whole dog perspective angle that they've been going through the whole episode. And yeah, mm. of course you know what he's saying there, yeah. and there's no need for us to know what it is. It's just, yeah. Ah, oh, it's so good. But yeah, just going back to, you mentioned uh, Emily Winthrop, mm-hmm. uh, who was our guest star for this episode, Tracy Ullman. Oh, uh, nice. fantastic. So yes, uh, for those who somehow don't know this, yeah, Tracy Ullman had the sketch show, which the Simpsons were originally born in, mm-hmm. uh, spent their time there for three years before being spun off into their own show. And this is the only time that Tracy Ullman's had a guest spot in the Simpsons. Really? And from... Sort of vague, a couple of reports was that she tried to get more of a cut of The Simpsons ongoing thing, and uh, that sort of fractured her relationship with the creators and execs and all that sort of thing. Oh, right. Which is 
again, sort of not super verified reports yeah. that in the original run when they were doing the shorts, they'd ask her several times to be a guest voice on mm-hmm. the shorts. And she'd always turned it down saying, no, I'm too busy with the actual show. Yeah. And they'd sort of got the feeling like she was treating them like the... It was a cat's in the cradle kind of moment. Ah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting that, yeah, Tracy Ullman is now, yeah, has, hasn't has since been back on and all that sort of stuff, which kind of maybe... Got some I- bad blood. Indicates that, yeah. but, yeah, I, I say all this with a giant, huge asterisk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stuff and nonsense taught by charlatans <laughs> and learned by bloody twits <laughs> is, is so good. The delivery is phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, no, it's so good. She was, yeah, such a good character. And, yeah, kind of a shame that she didn't end up doing more bit parts on the show. But, Mm -hmm. yeah, whatever. Hey, you're going to do one character. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Uh, How about you, BT? What stands out to you for better or worse? I'm going to throw to a bit I really like, which is this subtle uh, through line that we've had in the show of Marge loving sleazy soap operas. (laughs) Like, it only comes up every now and then, but it's just, I love that... Of course she works, she's home all day, and I like this kind of racy side of Marge that she keeps really well hidden. She's like, the, the woman's undoing a dress. I was like, Lisa's like, oh, is it always this good? And Marge's like, oh, I don't watch, I drop in and out. I'm just watching today because Randy is coming out of his coma and he knows where the phony prince's body is in the boathouse. It's like, <laughs> God damn. It's perfect. Yeah, she's always had that kind of like Mills and Boone sort yeah. of attachment. Yeah, yeah, yeah with the um, romance novels and Reverend, stuff. I thought you were dead. I, I was. was. <laughs> God damn, it's such a good send up of those shows and also I just love this kind of quiet little um continuation of Marge's love of this just sleazy television. Yeah. Well, I grew up with my mum being mm. like really into Days of Our Lives oh, right. and oh, so geez. like and her tapping out of that whole point where like they rendered 6 months of the story obsolete because they were like this character woke up from a coma and it was all his dream. <laughs> oh, like... brutal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's bad enough when they do that at the end of an episode of anything. Yeah, exactly. Let alone yeah. 6 months of plot line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's sort of, I think, where that became famous for being yeah. such a heinous example of it. Yeah. It's just nice as well to see, yeah, not only Marge having interests of her own, but mm. also, like, having mad skills. Her, like, flipping the oh, needle man, yeah. into the air and threading it is so sick. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And, yeah, that's what I love about Marge. You know, she's a homemaker, but she's happy and she's proud and she's good at it. Like, yeah. Also, just has a zippo on her at all times in <laughs> case she needs to prove how tough she is. It's in her sewing kit. <laughs> it's just- Ready, yeah. <laughs> Actually, you do need a lighter in a sewing kit. Sometimes you do need to, yeah, burn seams. Uh... And sometimes when you don't like something you've made, you need to destroy it. Yes. <laughs> and what stands out to me for better or worse? Oh, fuck. I, l- I do love the whole thing with the assassins. And mm-hmm. I feel like it's so well built up. And especially, you know, in contrast with the cookie, which is still kind of a thing that bugs me. I really, Homer should have done more of an effort to hide that or something. <laughs> uh, but he anyway, wrote a note. He, yeah. he did. <laughs> this is my macamadamia nut cookie. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the whole thing with the assassins and the dog getting I fucking love it. And how Bart gives the whole thing away, like just mindlessly. So they better be good for 125 bucks. Ah shit, I wasn't gonna tell her it was that much. <laughs> well Marge bought all those smoke alarms, they've had a single fire. <laughs> is it just me or is like Bart feels so much more like a kid? Mm, yes. This, Absolutely. Like so much more realistically and relatably like a kid. Yeah, he's not saying that line to get Homer in trouble. He's just blurting it out because he knows how much they cost. Yeah. He, yeah. he has no context for what money is really. But even his interactions with the dog, like mm. just the the sort of innocence of them, like him just turning around and like without thinking he's just like go home boy like on the bus like the delivery on those lines Mm. is so like oh that is an eight-year-old boy saying that yeah no true and you know it's kind of an unspoken thing in this episode that bart's sort of feeling for santa's little help is so hard because especially yeah the first episode of this season was bart gets an f and you know Ah. we've already had that moment of him you know just going oh fuck i'm dumb and just crying and yeah well there's even a moment where he says to santa's little helper it's not your fault you're dumb yeah and that's the connection they don't they very gently brush on it they don't actually lean on it at all better than yeah. like but mom I under- he understands me the way no one else does no no remember just, when it's there. i got an f yeah do you recall mother yeah no Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's an unspoken thing, and it feels like kind of sophisticated in that way. That, yeah, it's, I mean, it's been reinforced in this episode that Homer likes to strangle the boy on an mm-hmm, occasion. Mm-hmm. And at the moment where Bart has to do that to the dog, he's just, he's devastated yeah. by it. And yeah, oh man, so much but bumps in well, this maybe episode. Maybe if Bart had puppy dog eyes, <laughs> mm. Homer, Homer would stop. Who knows? <laughs> 
Oh, uh, but yeah, Homer giving back the assassins as well. Oh, my good dog. He just brought them to me as he does, and it just fell apart in his mouth. <laughs> I really like the background gag in the back of that is uh, all the different, like, I want to say genres of shoes, <laughs> Shoe styles. Genre. I don't know. The ones like kickboxing, then crime, then nightlife. Like, yep. Just let's have a crime section. Yeah. yeah and, Committing crime. And they're crime? all ice skates. <laughs> I didn't see that. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> they love their list gags as yeah. well. Like, you know, because there's also the different grades that they give to the dogs. The mm. Benji, the Fido, the Cujo. Yeah. Right oh, down shit. The <laughs> Cujo's about like a zombie dog, right? Yeah. Uh, and rabid. that's the one that Santa's little Saint helper Bernard. got. Yeah. Mm. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, a warranty doesn't cover fire, theft, or acts of dog. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It's so good. Yep. <laughs> Congratulations on your first child. <laughs> <laughs> so, wackiness. Was this a particularly wacky episode of The Simpsons? Not really. No, not at all. Well, I guess the thing we get is Santa's little help having a big day out. And that mm. was uh, adorable. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Sniffs a bug, eats a bug, steals <laughs> some jerky, chases some ducks. Buries a pot plant. That was very good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was very but, good. I don't know the button on that where he just rakes the top of the plant off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> buries the plant possibly a good act and then ruins the plant so good <laughs> and yeah then all the stuff with the the never break chain and then he just eventually puts a giant fucking padlock on it <laughs> and i do like the the little circle around where he's chained up is just dug to hell yeah yeah so like as i mentioned i have two dashes like these are notorious diggers oh, they are really? they are nightmare creatures when it comes to any sort of dirt like we Learning don't so have... much about dasher yeah, yeah, yeah we have like a mostly sort of like concrete tile back backyard but my wife has two garden beds that we have to keep them out of because they will <laughs> they will dig until they hit the next continent <laughs> like wow they will just go and they're also like they, they're constantly trying to dig into the couch or into <laughs> the bed yeah, just, just <laughs> checking for badges yeah exactly well mostly with henry like he's looking for new places to conceal himself like he just wants to be hidden <laughs> yeah. in some fashion so he digs his way in. oh wow yeah because uh, that was like my mom's old dogs they just and for no particular reason they just love to dig at a cushion for a little while before yeah. just sleeping on it mm-hmm. Or, or, yeah, dig up the blanket so that they can then, yeah, just hide underneath it. And it's like, there was a better way to do this, but you got to go with your instincts, I suppose. Dog. Yeah. Also, just the beautiful thing of them misunderstanding, because, like, we, we got our dogs when they were adults. And so, like, they know sit. They're mm. fine with that. We try to get them to stay. One of them, Archie, he knows stay. So he's sitting. He's staying. He's fine. Henry hears sit. He sits. He hears stay. He's like... A sack, give me the biscuit. So he's just like, <laughs> like immediately just starts yelling. So Archie's sitting there patiently waiting. Henry's like, what are you doing? I already sat. What do you want from me? <laughs> he's still staying, though, even though he's being impatient about it. <laughs> Here and there. He's still pulling it, trying to get to the beef wellington. Yeah. <laughs> Evans to Murgatroyd. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, that is so irresistible. A good beef Wellington smells fucking amazing. Stay. Stay. No, I really want to go get a beef Wellington I now. I don't understand why you brought one into the recording studio. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't necessary. It's been making me salivate all night. It's really rough. It's but, like I don't know how many days it's been there, too. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are staying. You get a toffee. For now. <laughs> And, you know, wackiness, you know, we explore animation as well. And just to, yeah, go back to the whole perspective thing, like, it was just a really good way to tie the episode together and not something they've actually done since. So it kind of exists alone in this episode, but it's so fucking effective. Mm -hmm. And transitioning over to the heart of the episode, especially when they bring it back in at the end and Bart's making his emotional plea, which, like, we understand. We're like, oh. And then his his perspective, blah, 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 sit. And (gasps) hope. And... Yeah, it's a bit flimsy and a bit, like, convenient that that eventually is what clicks. But, I mean, whatever. It worked for the moment. I have a bit of wackiness, and it may also oh. transition into Jordan's anal corner. Anal corner. Um, where Homer gets the colossal cookie, it's from the colossal cookie stand. It's got all this, like, classic Greek lettering. Yes. But the woman who walks up to him says aloha and is clearly <laughs> wearing a hula skirt. <laughs> what is the theme That's of this cookie stand? That's I so want to good. know. Yeah. <laughs> I lo- that was one writer's favorite joke. Like it had <laughs> to be. Yeah, yeah. Someone's just like, "Oh, you go," and they don't even know what their theme is. And you're just yeah. Like, yeah, there's like Tina Fey just like high fiving <laughs> herself in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, but 
again, it's one of these things that because it's not called to, I yeah, think yeah. it's a very good joke. Yeah. yeah. Homer's not going, wait a minute, <laughs> Greek people don't say hello. No, no, it's just unspoken and yeah, <laughs> have not thought about that at all in many of my millions of watches of this episode. Mm-hmm. Very yeah, good. that's so minor. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. But how about the bumps of this episode? What were your guys' favourite emotional moments? Or least favourite? Uh, Let's follow them all. Going to throw to a smaller moment just because it's not the big Marge and Lisa bit and it's not the Bart uh, Santa's Little Helper bit. It's a bit where uh, Lisa calls Homer at work and is like, you can get me these magazines. And like, he's like, oh, we've got the mumps. Oh, the kissing disease, my little girl's growing <laughs> up. It's like, oh. <laughs> I actually noticed as well, Homer had like drawn all over his shoes in this scene. Yeah. Because, yeah, we get the quick shot of him with his feet up on the desk before he answers the phone and mm-hmm. they had drawings all over him. I'm going to quickly look that up and see yeah, what. I'm the... kind of, I feel like that might have been part of a cut scene and maybe he was like drawing the assassins stuff on it. Yeah, that oh, was what yeah. I was getting from it as yeah, well. I do yeah. like the assassins have uh, vanity plates. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, why is that not a thing I've seen? <laughs> it's incredibly stupid, but I mean. Ultra fancy shoes are a huge thing now, so... Well, yeah, I mean, none that can detect heart rate, but yeah, definitely the uh, the reflectors, and surely Velcro is not the optimal um, tying <laughs> thing for a shoe. I wouldn't have thought so, but um, I'm not a shoe guy. I mean, I'm not going to argue with Michael Jordan mm. on what works. True. Michael Jordan has Velcro shoes? Uh, that's my understanding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a shoe guy. It as well. was a gag. I was just. So, <laughs> I was like. I mean, like obviously, like the greatest shoes are the ones that like get chewed up by the machine in Jumanji. <laughs> like those are the shoes <laughs> that I want. They could have changed the world. <laughs> Man, deep cut. Like not that Jumanji's a deep cut, but that is a deep cut. Specifically, within... the shoes. I yeah. wish I like if I'd been able to reference them by name, it would have been so much better. <laughs> yeah. I did learn to throw back to my previous gag before, what you mentioned about labyrinth. That the dog's name is Ambrosius yeah. in Ant Labyrinth. There you go. So ah. there's that. Oh, there we go. Tune in to an episode the next time that I guest on this podcast, <laughs> several months from now, I'm guessing, where like... <laughs> when we do the Rio sequel. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they go back to Brazil. Thank God. <laughs> and Dave knows the name of the Jumanji shoes. <laughs> so on his shoes, Homer's just written Homer Simpson All-Star. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, so he's doing Chuck Taylors, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's pretty funny. I mean, I think... There's a, a sort of abstract bumps thing is we talked before about that referencing like Citizen Kane stuff, sort of like bold kind of camera mm-hmm. stuff. Mm. I think there's something really powerful in this episode about perspective because like they do the dog's perspective. It's that sort of Friday the 13th parody. But there's also a lot to sort of paint the perspective of children. And I really love that. Like, I love the way that they paint, you know, the way the Bart sees the world, the way that Lisa sees the world. I think the standout moment for me was the, like, intense angles that you get on Dr. Hibbert. Yeah. <laughs> like, the yeah. really have wild... Have a wowie pop. Have a wowie pop. Yeah, like, after he's been sort of, like, condescending to her about all the math that she's interested yeah. <laughs> in. Um, but, yeah, like, that sort of, like, perspective play and the wildness mm-hmm. of the animation there is just, it's so joyful to watch, you know? Well, it yep. feels really inventive and stuff. And it, yeah. And it's kind of stuff that they nerfed to, like... They, mm-hmm. Sure. They, oh, absolutely. Like, even in the classic years, they didn't do a whole lot of that sort of uh, playing with perspective, I don't think. And no. to be fair, because... I think one of the reasons why you wouldn't is because the character models kind of look a bit off in a couple of sections, Mm. but like you kind of ignore that because of how world building it is. And yeah, like you said, showing the perspectives of these kids and it's such a lovely detail. Yeah. Mm. And it was a time as well where people weren't going to be like, oh, the animation looks rough. They were just going to be like, what feels true? Mm. Yeah. And no, and it's the kind of thing where even going back to some of these earlier earlier seasons of The Simpsons, where it is a little rough around the edges, where you don't feel like it dates that well. You're happy to take it in the context. Yeah. The only part that didn't date that well was making uh, Doctor Hibbert's house look like a direct Cosby reference. And but he's wearing a Cosby yeah. sweater. Not mm. their fault. At the Oof. time, it would have been charming. Yeah. Oh dear. I can't believe Hilltop Hood still play that song. <laughs> <laughs> it is uncomfortable for them. They can't sub in Cosby for anything. No. Uh, mm. Tacky. Cosy sweater. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Come on, you don't even have to change many syllables. <laughs> Hilltops, you Wearing that bastards. sweater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do the, uh, like, Nova FM censoring a rap song thing. <laughs> uh, but ultimately, did it feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Are these the characters we know and love? You're damn right it Absolutely. Did. Trope codifier. Yep. 
yeah, and one of the things I love is like Marge is a fully fleshed out human in this episode. <laughs> yes. Yep. Even in the classic episode, she so gets shortchanged. I do really love the bit where, you know, she's upstairs with Lisa and Homer's all like, Marge, the dog is hungry. And she's like, <laughs> well, feed him. She's like, oh, yes, Master. <laughs> it's, her, it's Homer being a jerk, but not awful. What is this yelling melody that we all agreed on, though? Uh, I that. need the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so weird, these things we agreed on. Well, it's the way to soft yell, because yeah. otherwise it just sounds like you're aggressive. <laughs> aggressive is in the monotone. Yeah, it's that mm. sing-songy thing, yeah, right? Exactly. I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, even like Marge being complex as well and going, yeah, I don't really want to give up the dog, but... Yeah, I do like a line of the kids making their case and Marge is like, no, I agree with your father on this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. She's yeah. clearly hurt. Yeah. yeah. Also just that Marge kind of like has this like... Uh, Liam Neeson style certain set of skills that's kind of like <laughs> under the, the besides the you know the fact that her skin is impervious to damage. Yep. Yeah. We also have the like Dr. Hibbert being like, I do wonder how you got my home phone number. Moment of silence. <laughs> Quite ingenious. <laughs> yeah, true. We never find out what that is. Yeah. That's... I like to think the answer was I looked it up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's true. She just has a certain set of skills that make her a nightmare to people like you. And and yeah, fireproof. So. She has yeah. Liam Neeson and Daenerys. I know. <laughs> yeah, Make me a nightmare unstable. to people like you, GPs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, yeah, Homer's more of the barking dad in this one, but mm-hmm. I feel like it's so contextual to the episode as well. Yeah. Where you can still believe that there's this dumb, lovable Homer, but yeah, he's just having a bad run with this dog. He really is. And to be fair, I mean, I know he left the cookie out, but he did put those shoes up a shelf. Yes. And it's just because the shoelace fell down. He tried. And he did buy the Never Break chain. Yeah, <laughs> which was 89 cents. But, I uh, am looking at him right down. <laughs> that whole build-up is quite good. Uh, it's not my dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sucks when you have those moments and you just totally have to eat shit after being, yeah. having a long diatribe. <laughs> yeah. I am hard done by a... Uh, fuck, I'm an arsehole. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but, and so much of it is that interplay of him being quite superior in those moments of mm. being, oh, I tied him up myself and being super superior with Flanders as well when he's mm. having this rough time with the dog. Flanders is so natural with the dog. Mm-hmm. He just like is talking to it and sort of gibberish and everything and like says yeah. a little helper response and everything. But you've still got like Homer being all mm, Flanders yeah, audience. <laughs> That's actually a good point because, yeah, Flanders is, yeah, approaching it. Dog's just going to understand it as gibberish anyway. Exert positive positive energy and mm-hmm. yeah that's effective yeah he, he's of an era where all of that like toxic masculinity stuff is just sort of like uh it, it's a background character note it's not like oh he's the worst guy ever it's mm-hmm. like no he's not great but there's heart there yeah. you know no definitely so yeah it, it does make it a weird homer episode because of that but yeah i feel like it's all justified and yeah and yeah lisa as well like yeah, it's interesting that they just made her sick for this episode. It could have mm-hmm. just as easily been the quilt they were working on the weekend, but it's a nice detail. Yeah. And that they give her lines. Yeah. And that the lines are good. Yeah. I feel like she's like, them. I need to go to school, just tape my lunchbox to my hand. <laughs> <laughs> and even by it, like, Lisa, you wasted the chicken pox. Don't waste the mumps. And, and later, she wouldn't when she, uh, in sure. Lisa Gets an A, where she spends a whole week playing Dash Dingo. Mm hmm. Really fucking good episode that the one good thing, guys, I think, gave it a really harsh rating. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's not that great of it. Oh, it's it's it good, is. but it's not fucking it's so uh, good. It's pretty good. Anyway, and they'll be back soon to review a controversial season nine episode. I wonder what that is. You can guess it. But anyway, mm. back to this. Would you watch this episode again? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and episodes we want to watch again, we like to think about what playlists they go in. What are some other Simpsons episodes that would pair nicely with this one? I mean, all things with Santos L. Halper. Definitely. Um, <laughs> I'd and, forgotten about that. Yeah. That was a good one. Canine Munity. Yep, the one where he's got the ears of the twisted stomach. Oh, yeah, yeah, Dog of Death. Mm. Where he is not the Dog of Death. No. Yeah, God. Um, the one we watched previously. <laughs> Let's yeah. that one again. <laughs> no, we could just omit that one. Because oh. it is a replay of the beats of this episode. It mm. kind of is. Really, except it ends with a bird murder. <laughs> no, I actually do feel like that, yeah, if we were doing this the old index way of watching them old to new, I may have given Munch to Birdie a lower rating. Mm. But 
Yeah, we try to give the new ones the best chance possible. We yeah. try. We they don't, really try. They do not often rise to the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> not our fault. BT, what would you like to change? Hmm, I could make with a bit more of the laugh laugh. I know that's not the point of this episode, but um, it's it's kind of the only thing lacking for me on this one when it comes to the actual rankings. Yeah, but that's about it. More of this Winthrop woman. She's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> how, good. how about you, Dave? What would you like to change? Yeah, I, I think I fall into the same category. I think it's pretty well balanced and you probably could have gone for a few more gags, but overall it's just like it feels really wholesome and mm-hmm. lovely and warm and, and considered. Like there's mm. so much in in the animation and in the relationships that's just like really like well fleshed out. No, definitely. And it is kind of the double-edged sword of trying to consider what you'd change about these early seasons because there was more of a sitcom rather than, yeah, yeah. an animated joke factory. Yeah. yeah. Which certainly what the Brazil episode was trying to be, this one definitely prioritised story way in front. Mm. Yeah. And, and also yeah. that we're literally trying to take, like, you know, one of the most venerated TV shows of all time into a little screenwriting class. It's <laughs> yeah. like, that's, it's a hard ask. Yep. No, I mean, that's it. The new episodes make us feel smart. These ones are like, ah. <laughs> I don't know. Funnier. How about that as a suggestion? <laughs> yeah, like I definitely get into that mode of like, you know, getting to the HD episode critiques and being like, I got this. I've been to afters. <laughs> and then like, <laughs> the old episodes is like, I know shit about fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly humbling. <laughs> as an AIM student. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, and we had one other guest star in this episode. Can you guess who it was? Meryl Streep. No. <laughs> been a while since I cracked that one out. So. It is. Uh, I, I appreciate the restraint. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Beethoven. Close. Oh. Um, one of the lassies? No, but they also Frank make... Welcome. There we go. <laughs> I was about to give you the clue. They also make animal noises. Yep. This was Frank Welker's first appearance on wow. The Simpsons, and he did his last one in 2002, and he's just rolling around in money and making dog noises <laughs> while he does it. <laughs> but really, really good dog noises. Oh, yeah. That clip of him doing the roars for Lion King still blows my mind. It's insane. Oh, oh shit. Is that the one where he's yeah. doing it in like a trash can and stuff? Yeah. It's just Frank Welker and a trash can and he's doing lion roars and they're amazing. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. It's like, what the, how can a human being do that? But That's cool. I have to send you a clip of this um, Filipino drag queen doing like horse impressions. It's fucking <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. That is a sequence of words that sounds like you were doing a mad lip. Oh yeah, it's so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and normally where I'd mention the Troy McClure guest star. Yeah, I was this gonna was say, not Troy McClure. I was going to say, my notes say off-brand Troy. It's a shame because it's such a Troy line as well. As an actor, my eyeballs need to look their whitest. <laughs> but yeah, it just sounded weird. But again, nice little animation moment, which is why are they flipping through the channels and then like yeah. the volumes all over the place and pull back and repeat. Ah, so, so good. All right, we are here. David, do you have any other notes? Yes, I, I had two notes. One of them was just, just a you can't give my dog away moment of being like, for some reason in my head, I just got like the um like uh, fucking slip not delivery. If <laughs> you can't take my dog away from me, <laughs> um, don't know why that popped in. Yeah. Um, but like also just the yeah, that's the big difference for me between this episode and the HD one is that that actual attachment that yeah. Bart had to his pet. Mm. But also, uh, I loved them looking through the ads for various different dog training schools. <laughs> That's right. There was like the the one that was a sanatorium <laughs> that, that was advertised with the slogan, we taught a dog to drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that. Yeah, the psych acts that they did go for, fucking unreal. So good. And he, oh, those are the, the, the book is it's, down. I've, I've placed the book down. I have fulfilled my contractual obligation. <laughs> the house is down. I should clarify, that's Bill House. He's on the front of the book. all the mustard in that house. <laughs> Not yet. There's BT. still more mustard. Let's see. I do like Lisa's impassioned speech when she's like, this is our pet, and while we can question his integrity, we cannot question his heart. And it's like, that's what was lacking from that first one. And then, uh, like Homer's follow-up gag of, if they ever decide to pull the plug on me, I want you in my corner. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I guess this is going back to Golden Retriever, Homer, because, yeah, he's immediately swayed and crying by this thing, and he's like, oh, what a speech. <laughs> he does love a good impassioned speech. Mm-hmm. I also quite like the bit where, you know, Bart's trying to get Sansa to help us sit, and it's like, no, uh, take a walk. Sniff that other dog's butt. <laughs> did exactly what I said. Yep. <laughs> the new quilt, we didn't really talk about that, but I do like the heart moment of that in the sense that, you know, Lisa says it's one thing to be part of a tradition, it's another one entirely to begin your own. That's mm-hmm. a good little bit. Yeah. And um, I just sent his little helper taking a frisbee to the face. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> just dunk. 
the way it, it hits and briefly indents his eyes and he just doesn't care. <laughs> doesn't even, even blink. And even with, like, before that, Lisa going, don't spend your last few hours just berating the thing. Now have some fun. Throw a ball. Here you go, boy. <laughs> he just <stands> <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> just crickets. Mm. All right. And, yeah, I've got a few little notey notes. Ooh. When Santa's little helper chases the ducks, Jasper just has a quick little move of the eyebrows that's just... Fuck you, dog. <laughs> Just looking at those ducks. Mm. Uh, Lenny, cover for me. Gotcha. Just mm. <laughs> Donut. <laughs> yeah, and that's all my notes. Time to rank this thing. And David, your turn to go first. Is it a gold or is it a cubic? Mm. Is it a gold or is this it a is cubic? This is the question. I'm going to go gold. All right. I reckon. Because I feel like it's really solid. It delivered pretty much everything I want from The Simpsons. It's maybe just missing like the laugh a minute sort of mm. like thing that that really kicks it off. But I love the dog trainer character. Um, mm. I think the bump bumps are one hundred percent there. The relationships are there. Yeah. It doesn't sing in quite the way that like the very best episodes of The Simpsons do, but it's for sure like emblematic of what was so good about the show. Definitely, BT. Yeah, I was on that gold cubic border the entire time, struggling with the idea, and I think Davey said of something very good in the sense that it's a very considered episode where it feels like the characters are very informed and all their actions are very informed to that. I am, however, here for laughs. Uh, not strictly <laughs> speaking. It's just, I was thinking about, like, a cubic one should be one that I get excited about and I sit down and watch no matter what I'm doing. And mm. I, as much as I like this episode, I'm not going to, like, get really excited when it comes on. Because while it's very heartfelt, it's not, like, a lot of fun. It's not got, got some great lines. So, great episode, but hey, that's what a gold is for. Yeah, absolutely. And I I'm, I'm agree, I'm going gold as well. And I feel like this is, like, incredible for a season two episode where mm. the show is still finding its feet they're working out who the characters are and i feel like there's a lot of moments where the characters are better fleshed out quite frankly yeah. than in even some of my more favorite episodes but yeah it doesn't feel like the simpsons show yet yeah. like yeah the characters are, are better but like the show as a whole yeah it's it's unfortunately an missing. excellent prototype yeah well it's, it's kind of that thing right where they're finding that balance it's like they've yeah. Yeah. they've moved away from just gag 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 they're finding the family dynamic mm. and then eventually it just meshes into that perfect venn diagram absolutely and yeah this is yeah an episode which yeah shows a lot of promise but yeah it doesn't get all the way there for me but it'll be a unanimous gold and it will be the one two three four six unanimous gold from season two it'll be joining dancing homer which is what i want to re-review i don't think we got that right and we that, were, was, that was pretty early and we were quite drunk we were fucking wasted on that Dancing one and, Homer, and it was yeah. a me and you one which i'm, yeah, yeah. I'm reconsidering redoing the, the all the duo really episodes yeah. this time drunker <laughs> <laughs> this time on cocaine it'll also be joining itchy and scratchy and marge uh where marge tries to get that show mm-hmm. cancelled oh yeah principal charming the pa T episode, Principal Skinner goes after Patty. Oh, brother, where art thou? Oh, that's the first Unky Herb episode. Mm -hmm. And the War of the Simpsons, where Marge and Homer go to relationship counselling camp and Ah, the catfish and General Sherman, all that. Yeah, yeah. Which are reviewed with pods. In the key. Of. Springfield. Nice. Like and subscribe. (laughs) Thank you. All right. Yeah, that about does it. Dave, thank you so much for joining us today. Any old time. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, have you got things to plug or uh, social medias or a website? Um, gosh. Want to uh, give out your email address? If people want more of that (laughs) sweet, sweet David Malloy, where can they get it? (laughs) I mean, yeah. So, like, a lot of the work that I'm doing at the moment is sort of, like, with various different community organizations and, like theaters for young people so not sort of like a lot of stuff to i guess immediately plug Mm -hmm. i've got a show i'm directing coming up mid next year so i guess yeah there's that a show called hit reset at uh shopfront arts co-op so yeah go on i'll give that a plug nice one and pt all right, so our first up, we have Thrones of Game, the Game of Thrones podcast where we watch the series backwards. I've already seen the show like a normal person, but Elliot had not watched a single episode until we started watching in reverse order. If you're after some more Game of Thrones content, because, I mean, bit of disappointing ending, so why not go backwards towards the promising beginning? It get better. It it's get interesting. better as it does. <laughs> and most importantly, our final episode of Pulp Fury Radio, our fiction podcast, uh, is finally, finally out after very long post-production and some 
heavy, excellent work by Elliot. That's oh, just Jazz Noir, The Music of Murder. This is a noir mystery uh, with a beatnik poet telling the whole story. It's some of my favorite scripting work I've done. Our actors are incredible. The Foley work we've done on it is great. I'm a huge fan of this. We've got some, a guy called Felipe Saravia to do the music. It's amazing. He's incredibly talented. Uh, Pulp Fury Radio, Jazz Noir, The Music of Murder. Check it out. It's great. As an unbiased listener as well, like, yeah, the Pulp Fury show fucking rules. Oh, thanks, um, and I want to, like, give a shout out as well to all of the people on social media who've been clamoring for me to be on the show. Like, you know, I know <laughs> it's it's coming, guys. They're listening. Like, the impression I get is that they're listening to the thousands of people calling in. Like, what? we'll get there. What, one day Dave will be on Pulp Fury Radio. Don't you worry about it. We want my boy. We want my boy. What's he saying? We like the boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not wrong. <laughs> no, absolutely. And uh, yeah, with season one in the bag now, we are mm. making talks of season two and yes. seeing what we can make happen. So, Hell yeah. yeah. I just don't hear any other shit like this that's happening at the moment. Like, And I listen to a fair few podcasts mm. and this is like, it's unique. It's great. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, let's get out of here and also listen to The Simpsons Index <laughs> like you are right now. Thanks for that. <laughs> That's a good show, I hear. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks, Dave. No sweat. And thank you, BT. I mean, there's quite a lot of sweat in this room. Oh, my God, I lied. <laughs> I lied so bad. Yeah, let's get out of this fucking sweat chamber. Yeah, I basically, uh, in the course of doing this podcast tonight, converted the soundproof room into a fucking sauna. Yeah, <laughs> to an indoor pool. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that's all the mustard in the house. Thank you for listening to the Simpsons Index podcast, which is also an online spreadsheet available at thesimpsonsindex.com. You can chat to us online at facebook.com slash the Simpsons Index or at Simpsons Index on Twitter and Instagram. And now please stay tuned for the bonus scenes. Man, I fucking... Because, yeah, you were asking me, what are the Simpsons up to at the moment? 32. Jesus. And, yeah, I saw when I was uh, cr- uh, shopping today... Family Guy released their season 19 DVD. I'm like, no fucking way. We're there. (laughs) Just. Yeah, it's weird to think as well that, like, that's as many seasons as I have had. And I would like (laughs) to think that I've become less racist over that time. (laughs) You're 20? (laughs) <laughs> 32 dude oh right yeah yeah, right. yeah. i was confused as <laughs> the, well oh, sorry. In, yeah in terms of the overall structure of the show mm-hmm. <laughs> no definitely. Well, you don't look a day over 19 <laughs> <laughs> uh, no it was funny actually one time we uh, i don't remember who it was it was one of the younger women that we've had as panelists on this podcast where i made a joke about being like 40 or something mm. and she was like oh okay and i'm like God damn I'm it. I'm in my thirties. <laughs> yeah, you just got up and just walked out of the room singing Sound of Silence. <laughs> I need to try them one day. I like eggs. I like pickle. Mm-hmm. Why I not? shrugged well, that, well, and then you. remembered this was an audio medium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to say it nice and loud and proud. Yeah, it's just like shrug. Rug. Insert <laughs> effect. David Malloy shrugs. <laughs> Yeah, my shoulders are terrible. <laughs> Gotta grease those things. <laughs> Creak. <laughs> Creaky, Creaky <shoulders>. limbs. <laughs> More on one of those, you know... Pornhub? <laughs> no. <laughs> didn't exist back in Ought 2. Mm-hmm. Okay. We didn't ever have Red Tube back then. <laughs> we only had our minds. <laughs> <laughs> and JPEGs. <laughs> had to blur our Not eyes. Not even GIFs. High quality glossy JPEGs. <laughs> um, oh, God. Now I'm thinking about porn. I lost my train <laughs> oh of thought. Oh, my God. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that You said the quiet bit loud. <laughs> Uh, that's it. You know, you don't want to be punching down. Like, uh, who was boxing the fucking bull in this episode or whatever? I missed that. I missed that too. I must have been taking a note. Did I d- hallucinate briefly? I think maybe you did. It's a warm night. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're hallucinating, that sounds fun. Uh, have you watched this episode well, this before? this is the porn you were imagining. It's yeah. just <laughs> you have, like, kinks that went on. <laughs> Super specific fetish. <laughs> uh, Joke's on them. I'm into this. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling trapped? Tired of the ordinary? Of course you are. We knew you were. If you're looking for an escape from the everyday, then you're looking for Pulp Fury Radio, a new podcast anthology series featuring all original stories in classic pulp genres like sci-fi, noir, horror, and fantasy. Join us and journey to a small town being invaded by a parasite from beyond the darkest depths of space. What could have done that? What is tentacles like that? At first it was like an infection, but it takes control. Come on, we've got to run! This town needs us more than ever and I do not intend to let it down. 
or investigate a murder while trapped aboard a speeding train with seven strangers and one killer. I am Inspector Thomas Page of Interpol. Do any of you recognize the woman cuffed to my arm? Yeah, ma, die Wölfin von Meidanek. I have five minutes to find out just which one of you is a traitor working with this Nazi. We've gone over everybody's story, and as far as we can tell, everyone is who they say they are. Oh, I see. So, we wait to see who dies next to narrow down the search. Just stay back. <laughs> Perhaps you prefer selling insurance in a world of fantasy and magic. I know he used fire, but he wasn't a pyromancer. He was a pyromaniac. This is a very minor quest, not even a level one, really. I'm talking real adventure, real danger and excitement. Seek ye not the lost scroll, child. We are in no way equipped to face off against a dark wizard. You majored in English and I forged all my report cards. Fireball! Or solve a crime of murder, mystery and music. Fearless Felix Phoenix is the name. So, what can I do for you, detective? You're wrong, Felix. Don't you feel it? Sorry, kitten, but feelings don't matter when there's no proof. Ready? Let's jam. Each episode comes fully loaded with suspense, action, mystery, and drama, all to help you escape from your everyday. You can find out more at pulpfuryradio.com with our first episode coming soon to wherever you get your podcasts. Come on, your adventure awaits. Or whatever.